Golden Boy Fight Night is on the air for the first time in three months. We're back at Fantasy Springs Resort Casino in Indio, California in the Coachella Valley Desert. Our main event tonight features undefeated Raul Curiel from Tampico, Mexico, takes on veteran from Brooklyn, New York, Courtney Pennington in a 10 round scrap. Before that, Gucci Manny Flores coming off his first career defeat gets back into the ring trying to get on the winning track against Nicaragua's Jerson Ortiz in a super phantom weight division fight. Also on the card tonight, Manny's younger cousin, 18 year old Grant Flores is on the card. He'll be taking on Delic Pogo in a six round fight at 154 pounds. Plus, Daniel Luna, just signed by Golden Boy Promotion from Victorville, California. He makes his Golden Boy debut against Alexander Gutierrez in a full round lightweight fight. First up though, is a six round scrap between Jorge Chavez from Southern California taking on Marvin Solano, the veteran from Managua, Nicaragua. Inside the event center for Golden Boy Fight Night, you see the main event, Curiel and Pennington. That's coming up later on tonight. I'm Beth Duran alongside Shane Mosley, who's broadcasting with us tonight. Normally we see you in the ring. How you yes. feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. I'm excited to be here, and uh, I'm looking forward to a great match. And you're going to see a good match because Raul Curiel in the main event tonight, you know him very well, having trained at Wild Card. Curiel trained by Freddie Roach. You've been in the ring sparring with him, messing around with him, seeing what's going on. What kind of young man is he? Oh, he's a hard worker. He puts in a lot of work, and um, I'm, ex I'm excited to see him put on a great performance. And now Curiel is the main event tonight. There you see him being led by Freddie Roach. He's together for five years, Curiel undefeated from Mexico. He was a 2016 Olympian. A slow development to his career because of injuries and also because of COVID. The pandemic shut everybody down, and he went back to Mexico. By the time he came back to the United States, trying to develop him and Golden Boy really likes what they have with him. He's now 27 years old. He's only 12 and 0 Shane, but at the same time, this is a young man who is fresh and just because he's 12 and 0 doesn't mean he's inexperienced because of that big amateur background. This is a young man who feels like he's ready to make some noise at 147 pounds. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. I've seen him spar with many great champions, current champions, and uh, he puts in the work to be the next champion. And what he's been doing lately has been knocking dudes out, just like Brad Solomon. Earlier in his career, he wasn't doing it. Lately, the last five fights have ended early. What do you want to see from Curiel tonight? I want to see great boxing, cut off the ring, and set up the knockout. All right, it's if you win, it's always good, right? That's nice. But it's also how you win on Golden Boy Fight of Night. Course. It's all about that. You got to put on the show, especially here on Thursday Night of the Zone. You know everybody's watching you. That's you right. said you want to see that knockout. Why? I want to see that knockout because I want to see him go to the next level. I, I know that he could be there. I've seen him train. I've seen him work. And I know that he can be a star that he wants to be. So that's why I want to see him get the knockout. Now, Shane, you've been on the A side. You've been on the B yeah. side. You've been the favorite. You've been the spoiler. And tonight, the spoiler playing role is led by Courtney Pennington that's right. from Brooklyn, New York. Now, Curiel had the amateur background, had the pedigree, everybody behind him. Pennington started boxing at 23. He showed up with nobody early on in his career. Right. He had no trainer. He had no manager. He had no promoter. Still doesn't really have a big team behind him. There he has a manager finally. Right. But his attitude, when you talk to him at the fighter meetings, is like, watch out. I'm yeah. not just the B-side. I'm here for the upset. You love that attitude. I, I love that attitude, and especially to hear his story. Uh, I want I want to see him do put on a good performance. You know what I mean? Maybe get the upset. I've been on both sides, like you said, and I'm rooting for both guys. <laughs> Bennington, 36 years old. Curiel, 27. The big pedigree against the veteran. It'll be a good matchup tonight in our main event. For more on tonight's show, let's go to Brandy Flores. Raul Curiel is extremely dedicated to his craft. He's the type of fighter who isolates himself from all other distractions during training camp, which is what he did in preparation for tonight's fight. But there is one thing that he just can't get off of his mind. This November, he's expecting his first child, a baby girl, and Curiel told me that that's not something that exactly escapes your mind. So he's using that as motivation to take his game to the next level up, his hard work, his work ethic, and his dedication, because he wants to provide the best he can 
and for his family. Guriel has sacrificed so much at this point, being 27 years old. He moved his entire life from Mexico to the United States to pursue his dream of becoming a professional fighter. He wants a world title. His first step is getting past Courtney Pennington tonight. Fantasy Springs Resort, the pool. Beautiful afternoon here in Coachella Valley. The tail of the tape for our first scrap on Golden Boy Fight Night. Jorge Chavez undefeated, 7-0, five kills. Much younger, but he is shorter, but they have the same reach, Chavez and Solano. Our ring announcer for tonight, the one and only Joe Martinez. Live on the zone from Fantasy Springs Resort Casino here in Indio, California. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to Golden Boy Fight Night. It's brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions, sponsored by Bet Online, your online sports book. All of tonight's fight odds are brought to you by Bet Online. And masculine, it's a mentality. Don't be a man, be the man. And now, fight fans, we are set to go. Six rounds of featherweight action headed your way. The three judges scoring at ringside. Ray Armendariz, Jerry Cantu, and Fernando Villarreal. When the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Raul Caiz Jr. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing blue with white, he weighed it officially 122 and one quarter pounds. His professional record stands at 24 victories, 10 defeats, with eight wins coming by way of knockout desde Managua, Nicaragua. Here is Marvin Solano! And across the ring stands his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black trunks trimmed in silver, he weighed in 123 and three quarter pounds. In seven fights, he stands perfect. Seven victories, no defeats. Five wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the undefeated featherweight from Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, El Niño Dorado, Jorge Chavez. Fighter Chief second only, please. Fighter Chief second. Mouthpiece. Perfecto. All right, gentlemen, you receive the instructions in the dressing room. Know what I expect? A good, clean fight. Ya recibieron las acciones con una pelea limpia. Golpe legal is legal punches here for you. Legal punches here for you. Touch gloves, glove to both of you. One set to los dos. Raul Caiz Jr., the third man in the ring. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be for Golden Boy Fight Night this Thursday evening in Indio, California. Golden Boy Fight Night, all about the development of young fighters. Oscar DeLoya, the Hall of Famer, and of course, President Eric Gomez. So, hey, we got to develop a series where we can get some of our young fighters some exposure, especially during the middle of the week. It's Thursday. We know there's Listo. NFL football out there, but it's Listo. also boxing. Anytime we get some boxing, Box. Jay Mosley, you get fired up for it. Yes, I do. Right away, they step on each other. Right. This is a good scrap. Jorge Chavez in the black. Trains now with Hector Lopez, TKO Boxing in Santa Ana, California, who trains Alexis Rocha, and formerly Ronnie Rios, who retired. And 7-0, five KOs, took him on a few fights ago. And like, okay, this young man needs to make a, some adjustments. Came from San Diego, he left everything behind, now lives at, he says, at the Camp House in Orange County. And tonight is his toughest test. Marvin Solano from Managua, Nicaragua. Good left hook. A veteran of 34 fights. For more on Chavez, let's go to the third member of our crew, Brandy Flores. Just like you mentioned, Beto, his toughest opponent to date for Chavez and Marvin Solano. In order to elevate his career, Chavez knows it's sink or swim. And he was very disciplined all during camp. Last fight, he felt that he was too flashy. And so this camp, he worked mainly on his strength. He told me he had to go back to the basics, perfecting those little details so that they translate well. Going up against a guy who's only been knocked down a few times in his career. But Chavez says he feels very confident tonight and he's never felt better. Yeah, his last fight was 89 days ago in Ontario, California. Shane, you were on that card, so yes, you know it. Yes, I was. It. I was the co-main event of that card. And that was against Christian Lorenzo. He went the distance. But Shane, when you're a young fighter and they're bringing you up, and it's, okay, we even looked at this record, like 7-0 against a guy who was 24-10. and 10. Why? And you asked the manager immediately, Abraham, why are you taking this fight? Yeah, I thought it was a very risky fight. I mean, even though, you know, the guy doesn't have the, the greatest record, he does have the experience, and that can, you know, can maybe hurt a young fighter. 
but at the same time, uh, Golden Boy Fight Night is about developing and also finding out what you got. A good right hand by Chavez. Chavez is putting together his punches really well this round. He, he went to, down to the body, maybe trying to weaken him. You know, the guy with a lot of experience, you know, you want to you work that body, make sure you slow him down. Ooh. Right hand, but Chavez right. lands on the jaw of Solano, who moves back. Chavez definitely got his attention with that uppercut. Stop. Solano no, no. did land. Step back. He landed one to get caught by one. <laughs> Solano moving back. Yeah, this is the fight I told you, Shane. Like, okay, very interesting to see how this one plays out. And it's definitely put, playing out interesting. Our main event tonight, Raul Curiel, Courtney Pennington. Job is looking very calm. Final seconds of yes, the opening round. Golden now. Boy fight. Ten in seconds. Indio, California. Just getting going on a Thursday. Tempo. Looking in at Chavez's corner, Hector Lopez, a trainer. Cutman C is working. Via Senora and Abraham Perez in there also. But Shane, you train at Wild Card at times. You're in Vegas with Bones Adams and everybody in the Vegas scene. You're also MMA world. You see this for a young better fighter like Chavez or who has Alexis Rochas to look up for example. That's huge for a young fighter to see. That's what I got to do to get to the next level, isn't it? Yes, and, and I think he's Box. doing a good job. He's looking very composed. He's looking like he's that uh, influence is definitely playing a part and in a good way. Chavez, we saw him make his pro debut in the Munguia Gabriel Auto Cars in 2021. That's when he was still in San Diego with his team. And then he fought in San Diego on a night where he looked okay. He got dropped early in the fight, then he ended up dropping his opponent. And he said, after that, I realized I needed to change things. Yeah. One of them being was, he, Shane, the kid was handing out, delivering tickets. Right now, he's just delivering a left hook. Yeah, he is, and he's looking great. Yeah. Like, you, you gotta be locked in all the time. No, said, no, 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 the day of the fight, he was out there delivering tickets, Shane. Yeah. You can't be doing that. No, you can't. No, you can't. Yeah. And that's when they say there's levels to it. And after that, that's when he decided to train with Hector Lopez and moved to Orange County. A nice uppercut by Chavez. This was scheduled for six rounds. He's putting on a lot of great pressure. That's Chavez. Uh, and I think it's working. So Solano, the veteran of 34 fights, comes from the same hometown as Chocolatito. Great fighter, Chocolatito. One of the greatest. Man, you ever been around him? Um, I've, I've seen him once. The nicest man you'll ever deal with. <laughs> Brandy Flores, we're going to have her busy tonight. She's working, trying to get us more inside from the corners. What do you have, Brandy? Yeah, from Chavez's corner, the trainer basically telling him, you saw how he landed that nice hit, and he told him, hey, you got to settle down. You're chasing him. Don't try to land that big shot, because he could tell he's trying to do that. He's saying to just box him. What do you think of that advice, Shane? Uh, I think it's, it's great advice. I think, uh, you know, not to load up on those shots. And, and uh, you know, the knockout will come. Or the knockdown will come. Especially when you're going up against a dude that's been boxing almost 11 years. And hasn't been down that much. Yep. Who knows how to roll with these punches. Right. You know, Solano fought 34 days ago. Yeah, man, that's the, the veterans for you. So, he got called this week, and he's like, yeah, I'll take the fight. <laughs> so, the guys are the backbone of boxing, guys like Solano, where just stay in the gym, stay ready. 
First time fighting in California, though. Ten segundos. Para la campana. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell. Tiempo. Camarón Cepeda puts his undefeated streak on the line against Marcito Hesta. Mexico against the Philippines in LA, live on the zone, September 16th. Daniel Luna, just signed by Golden Boy Promotions, 21 years old, training with his father. You see him wearing the red cap. He's coming up next. 2-0. Young man has a lot of potential, a lot of upside, I've been told. Had a highlight video that went viral in his last fight on a Sugar Ray Leonard closed event. Yeah. Usually those Sugar Ray Leonard special events, no video comes out. After that, I was like, okay, that knockout needs oh, to go. Has so to come out. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the third round, scheduled for six between Chavez and Solano. And you've seen a very composed Jorge Chavez. The only shame, the first couple of fights that we've seen of him, it's running around like the Tasmanian devil trying to knock everybody out. Looks like he's being patient in there. Oh, he's definitely being patient in there, setting up his shots. He's doing he's doing good so far against a, a very, um, you know, experienced opponent. So I think he's doing the right thing. I think he's winning. Well, all of his fights have been in California for Nino Dorado Chavez. He's from Tijuana, a typical border kid where he's from Tijuana, grew up in San Diego, would go back and forth on weekends and, right. like, He and his mom. You see the compu box punches through too. It's all Chavez landing more effective punches. And for a fighter like Solano, those veterans, Shane, once you start moving up the ladder and you're taking on the veteran, they give you wrinkles where you're like, wait a minute, I don't see this right. in a fight normally. How do you make those adjustments as you come up with those guys? Uh, you, you just take them as they, as they come. You know, obviously you can't you can't uh, train for every single uh, you know style, but you know you have to take them as they come, and that's why an experience like this is invaluable for a guy like Chavez. Yeah, Chavez had a veteran who won six rounds in his last fight. You, know, you got to get the quality work as you move on, but you know his last opponent gave him some resistance, but not really. Solano's not intimidated by him. You, know, you can definitely see he's not intimidated by him. Well, yeah, at the fighter meeting, you have to be like, you know anything about him? Nah, I saw him at the weigh-in. <laughs> <laughs> right. Did you watch any film? Nope. <laughs> Do you care? Nope. nope. <laughs> and those are the guys you got to be careful with, right? Oh, of course, because they have that, uh, especially being from Nicaragua, they have the, um, what, what kind of the thing attitude. They have that attitude, man. Yeah, it's Solano moving back, but it seems like this round he's starting to throw more punches. Solano doesn't have heavy hands at all. Only eight stoppages in his career. So there's 24 wins. Right, with, 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 a record, with a record like this, he knows how to survive. And he knows how to get in there and, uh, and win. And he knows how to take punches as yeah. an uppercut from Chavez is strong. But Solano right there. Yeah, he's definitely affected by that one. Solano is. Solano looking right at him. Good round for Chavez. Oh, that's a great round. You have a guy that oh, a hook move. from Chavez. Oh. That drops Solano. The hook from Chavez got him in the final seconds of the round. Solano on the mat. And it's over. Wow. A KO for Jorge Chavez. Nino Dorado is now 8-0 with six KOs. We were just saying how Solano knows how to take a shot, but that hook really got him right in front of us, Shane. That was impressive. A very impressive hook. He got his attention, and then he, he uh, put him away. Solano caught at the end of the third round. 
And this is a fight, you and I were talking about it. We were wondering, why would you take on someone with so much experience? And his team even said it, Shane. We got to find out what we got with this kid. Yep. Very patient, took his time, chopped him down. Yes. I think, I think we found out something great about Chavez. And uh, I think that he is the next guy. I think he's the next guy. There you see Alexis Rocha in his corner. We'll be seeing Alexis later on this fall. We'll see some shots, and he just started wearing him down at the end of the round, Shane. There's that hook that Beautiful got him. Hook. His knees were buckled. Was that guy a leaping shot? Yep. Yeah, the he jumped at it, huh? The gazelle hook. Beautiful. Oh, man. Great job by the crew of the truck getting that replay, the different angles. And the way he fell, you knew Solano was not going to get up. Yeah, usually when you fall forward, they're not getting up. And here's what I like about Solano. He gave him the resistance, it was tough. And Chavez, not jumping up and down, celebrating all crazy, right. like, I'm supposed to do this. Exactly. A couple fights ago, Shane, he's on the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> the maturity factor. Right, right. Joe Martinez, ready to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 59 seconds. Round number three, referee Raul Caiz Jr. reaches the count of 10. For your winner, by way of knockout, se mantiene invicto. He is still undefeated from Tijuana, Mexico. El Niño Dorado, Jorge Chavez. Jorge Chavez. I don't know. Six KOs. Golden Boy Fight Night is all about developing fighters and seeing what they got. You said in the beginning, Shane, yeah, you got to win, but it's how you win. It's how you win. The first time you're seeing Chavez, do you want to see him again? I definitely want to see him again, especially with knockouts like that, the maturity like that. I want to see him again for sure. Yep. Nino Dorado. 259 of the third round. There you see Bugatti as manager. Hector. Well, you know Hector's never gonna celebrate anything. You've been around Hector right, enough, right, right, right. wearing his traditional Patriots cap. <laughs> right, let's look at the numbers for this one. The punches, everything on the side of Chavez. Right. And you see him, but it was the way he landed, which is what took a toll on him. Right. But usually when you land numbers like that, 41%, they're going to sleep. And he did. Yep. 259 of the third round. Now the power shot. When you land half of your power shots? <laughs> right. That's incredible. That's, that's, that's good statistics right there. 50% yeah. of the power shots landed by Nino Dorado Chavez. Hey, there he is. He gives it back to Tijuana. Hasn't been home in a while. Been living in Orange County. But he's just fighting his way out, trying to get his mom a better life. He was working landscaping. He was selling his shirt. He was doing everything he could. And recently, he just said, I got to become a full-time boxer. And you see a difference in the young man. Yes, you do. That's what happens when you have a mentality change. And you, you grow up, you develop, and, and you get, get away from those old things. I'm very aware of how lucky I am. The resume has been sensational. All I wanted to do was play football. Women's teams have always been used to playing in, in the Cubs' smaller stadiums. Playing at Glasgow and Camp Nou means everything. If you give girls the opportunity to play, they will show up. I really turned into someone who doesn't even resemble the kind of person I am. The career of one of the all-time greats is all but over. Nice comeback. Wow, that's 
what it's all about. Zerto is hungry and ready to remind the world what he's made of. He wants to continue that hype. Certain fighters, they wait for the belt. That's not a true warrior. Wow. A true warrior will wait until the referee rips you apart. I've been in many of the final moments in my career. Dylan oh, White fight, which was a straight out war. These are all times that will add to the legacy. Oh, I'm sure he's getting up from that. It was tough, but it made me. September has arrived. And a busy couple of months coming up this fall in the world of boxing. Let's take a look at what the zone has to offer in the next few weeks. And now entering the arena. Fierro! Big left hook to the body from Fierro. He's always looking for the big shot. Richardson, Hitchin. Boy, right hand down the side from Hitchin. He He's produced a flawless performance. Super! Put that smile on that face and keep knocking him out. Pacheco! Beautiful shot there for Pacheco. Chantel Cameron. Desperately working away. Also coming up, KSI takes on Tommy Fury. Oh my, that's a big crossover boxing battle October 14th, live on the Zone pay-per-view. But that's not all. Logan will fight in the other half of the double main event, taking on Dylan Dennis. Joe Martinez, let's hear our next fight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Four rounds of the Super Featherweight Division. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside, Jerry Cantu, Robert Hoyle, and Fernando Villarreal. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Gerard White. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white with gold. He went it officially 129 and three quarter pounds. Tonight, he seeks victory number one as a professional from Lake Elsinore, California. Here is Prince Alexander Gutierrez. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing tonight white trunks trimmed to the flag of Hawaii and Mexico. He weighed it officially 134 pounds. And as a young professional stands perfect in two bouts, two victories. Both wins coming by way of knockout from Victorville, California. Here is the undefeated Daniel Aikaika Luna. Gentlemen, to the center. 
Okay, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. We all know what to expect out of each other. I'm going to let them work from the hip to the hip over here and from the hip to the hip over here. Let's touch them up and we can go to work. Protect yourself at all times. Gerard White, the third man in the ring for our okay, second bout on Golden Boy Fight Night, making okay, his Golden Boy debut is Daniel Luna, the 21-year-old from okay, Victorville, California, recently signed by Oscar DeLoya and Golden Boy Promotions. His opponent, Alexander Gutierrez from Lake Elsinore, California, in his third professional bout. We are underway. Daniel Luna, highly touted prospect. You see the Hawaii flag on one side of the trunks, his mother's side is Hawaiian. Ikaika is his middle name, strong warrior in Hawaii. A lot of family in Oahu watching. So how's it in the 808? You see the Mexican flag on the other side of the trunk representing his father and trainer, Daniel Sr. Immediately body work from Luna. Good work from Luna. Much taller fighter. He's in the lightweight division. Beautiful right here. Immediately working is Luna. Snapping the jab. He's in that long reach advantage. Really, really fast jab, fast punches. Yep. Yeah, great stuff. For more on Luna, let's go to Brandy Flores. Yeah, Lu Luna's father, Daniel, he works the graveyard shift at a Dr. Pepper warehouse up in the high desert, sleeps for a couple hours, and then wakes up his son to put the focus on him, training him in their garage, driving more than two hours from Victorville to get sparring in other gyms. And Luna's goal is to retire his father and take care of his other six siblings who are watching. So this is a family affair. All of his siblings are here, except for his sister, who's in the Air Force, Tatiana. She's actually serving overseas in Japan. But Luna knows that everybody's counting on him and he can't wait to rise to the expectations. Well, shout out to his sister, Tatiana, and everybody serving in the armed forces. And Shane, you know all about father, son, boxing relationship and when your dad your trainer and you see your dad coming up and it's like wait he hasn't slept because he just wants me to train you gotta love that oh yeah you, you definitely love it you know that your father's gonna give you his absolute best and i think that's what his father's doing and it shows and his father has been the only trainer he's had he's had a good amateur coach in the high desert high desert boxing club and we were talking to him at the fighter meeting he said i'm on fuse right now i haven't slept but he's, like, when did you see something special in your son? He said, early on, I knew there was something there with him. And he got himself a contract with Golden Boy Promotions. And they're looking to be the next star. Yep. He's got the look. Yes, he does. Now we need the performance. Yep. Made he's his, setting it up. Yep, made his pro debut last year in Puerto Vallarta. Second fight was on a Sugar Ray Leonard event. And here he is on his own in his third scrap. Looking to tee off against Alexander Gutierrez. Final seconds of the opening round. Scheduled for four rounds. Beautiful rise on by the hold his head and hit it. Catch his jab and bring that right, right out there. Okay, his, his hand is way lower. See, replay from that first round, Shane Mosley. You like what you see from Luna, the taller fighter. I do. He's throwing those, getting those body shots, throwing those fast, snappy shots up top. He's looking great. All right, so you're looking at this. You're like, wait a minute. The tall kid from Victorville. Good looking. Hello, Golden hello. Boy has known him for a while. You're thinking Ryan Garcia? Yeah, all the similarities are there. Doppelganger, all that good stuff. But as he said, yeah, I know Ryan. His dad used to train with Ryan as an amateur. But 
like I'm a different person. I'm going to create my own identity. We know him, but it's not like I'm trying to be him. And he's definitely not trying to be him. This young man has a lot of potential. But you, Shane, you're Shane Mosley Jr. You know what it's like when everybody's going to compare you to somebody else. How do you break out of that? Uh, you just got to keep on doing your thing. All right, people are going to talk and do whatever they're you know, going to do, but you have to do your thing. You have to perform and make your own lane, and eventually it'll happen. Body as, shot, left hook. As you can see, he's setting it up. So he lives in Victorville, about two hours away from downtown Los Angeles, especially with the traffic. They leave early to beat the traffic to go over the hill. Let that go. Let that and they've been go. doing a lot of work in the Southern California gyms, specifically going and training with... Manny work, Robles work and Edgar Hasso Estrellita, where they go to their gym and get some good sparring and go to different gyms. And that's what you have to do. You can't be in your own comfort zone. you got to get out of there. And those are some really good gyms. Absolutely. He's going to some really good gyms, getting out of his comfort zone, and building and keep on stacking those bricks to get better. Get out of there. Get out of there. Let him go. Let him go. I've heard about the young man in the Southern California scene. Like, we had uh, our media workout last week, and I was in the interview there, holding the hosting, and like, okay, I, first time I met him, like, this kid's got some charisma, and body shot Great. drops Gutierrez, a quick one-two body shot for Mikaika, the Hawaiian warrior, is he going to get up, Gutierrez looking over, oh, and he tried, and the body didn't, the legs wouldn't cooperate, he got up, and he felt something, Shane, and Alexander Gutierrez feels the power from Daniel Luna in the second round. And Luna is now 3-0. Ah, oh, with KO. He did what he was supposed to, Shane. Yes, he did. And a guy that was trying to make it up with grab. And uh, he definitely set it up, got those body shots, got him out of there. There's just his father with the tattoos. He said, I knew that this was going to happen. Well, this was the plan to get to Golden Boy. There's a smile from Daniel Luna. And again, did what he's supposed to do. No need for the cartwheel. No need to jump up and down. Right, right. I know you're excited inside. Of course. But uh, this kid's acting like, yeah, this is just what I'm supposed to do. I'm, yeah, I'm supposed way. to be here. I'm supposed to be a star. This is, this is exactly what's supposed to happen. And Alexander Gutierrez is... <laughs> An MMA fighter also, but he's been boxing the last couple of years, so he knows what shots are like. He's not like... Yes, he's used to this. Yep. All right, so the knockout happens in the second round. It was quick body work, Shane. One, two, boom. Right on the rib cage, huh? Yeah, that one hurts. <laughs> Especially that left hook. And he set that one up with that right hand to make him think of, not think about it. Come back with that left hook straight to the body. Beautiful setup. It's the left side to the right, and it was quick. Man. So the 21-year-old Daniel Luna, number four of seven Luna kids. He has a younger brother who's also boxes amateur. There it is. So he gets to hear it officially from Joe Martinez on Golden Boy Fight Night. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. One minute, 53 seconds. Round number two, referee Gerard White reaches the count of 10 for your winner by way of knockout. He is still undefeated, Daniel Ikaika Luna. One fifty-three of the second round, and Luna, because he knocked him out quick, he's going to get the post-fight interview with Brandy Flores. We got to get that set up, but let's go look at some of the punch stats that Luna was able to land through a round and a half. Uh, Brandy Flores, let's talk to her. Daniel, when you stepped into the ring before, you were really calm, cool, and collected. But when you stepped into the ring, you see all the lights. What was kind of going through your head? I was like, wow, like the energy was crazy. I was just taking it all in, and it kind of like felt like it fueled me a little bit, you know? Being uh, calm and focused in the, in, the, in the dressing room, and then coming out here, it's crazy. It made me feel really good. Yeah, and we could tell second round knockout here and on the zone. What did you see that led to that? Um, well, I studied my opponent before. And uh, I noticed he keeps his hands up like this. His whole uh, rib cage right here is wide open. So uh, me and my team, we, we talked about it. 
and we were setting up with the jab, right hook to the body. And Exciting knockout here at Fantasy Springs in front of a large crowd. How do you think this sets you up as you progress? Oh, I think it sets me up great. I think uh, everybody here at Golden Boy has, uh, has me on the right path, and I'm super excited. I can't wait for my next one. All right, congratulations, Thank guys. You so much. Daniel Ikaika Luna, there's his father. The emotion on his father's face. He was working in the graveyard, making the sacrifices for the family. Said he saw this coming. Luna and Merritt, the fighter being told, was like, I knew I was going to be a pro when I was 12 years old. Like, right. It's like, not like, okay, maybe I will. Like, no, I'm doing it. That's got to be a great feeling for him. Oh, it's absolutely great feeling. I mean, for me, same way. When I knew I got, when I got in there for the first time as an amateur, I knew I'm going to the top. And there's the voice of Shane Mosley Jr. doing the broadcast tonight. There you see the smile from the young man from Victorville, California. Got a good following on social media. You know, sign the autograph, sign the glove. See, Cutman Mike Rodriguez working with him. I was like, Mike, is this kid legit? He's like, oh yeah. And you know, Cutman Mike does not mess around. All right, two fights down. Let's look at the fight card so far. Jorge Chavez and Luna with KOs. Coming up next, Grant Flores. Then Gucci Man Flores, of course, the main event, Curiel and Pennington. Golden Boy Fight Night in Indio, California. Leaving home doesn't mean you're leaving alone. Leaving home doesn't mean you become a stranger. In fact, wherever you go, they will follow. Follow through the mist that rolls in from the treads. They will march, march on together until they meet. Nottingham, Leeds, Wood, Warrington. Face to face, in the battleground, in the middle ground, there's no turning back. Women's teams have always been used to playing in, in the club's smaller stadiums. Playing at Clásico and Camp Nou means everything. Most of these players are Barcelona fans. Fue increíble, la verdad. Alucinamos todas. A new chapter about to be written in the history of these two famous clubs. Mendoza decides to go for the long range effort. Whoa. Cuando se generan ambientes así, es que tu cuerpo va solo. There it is, the confirmed attendance inside Camp Nou, a world record. Once we had that confirmation, we just all started to, to cry. I do think this game changed women's football. I do believe it changed the perspective from all of us. times can even make you or break you. It was tough, but it made me. This was the moment that Anthony Joshua became a major star. I was just shouting at him, like, come on, let's fight, where are you running? Joshua's going for the finish. And this is the, uh, the passion of Dylan White. This is absolute I thought there was going to be riots in the crowd, I really did. In the space of six years, he'd gone from being a raw novice to going in with one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. You're one shot away from, from trouble or disaster at any point. You have to dig deep. And they're the type of fights that people remember for many years to come.
Mexican Independence Day, September 16th. We'll see the ring return of lightweight Camarón William Cepeda against Marcito Hester, who's always a tough out. Camarón looks to continue his undefeated run against the upset-minded Filipino. Cepeda Mercito Hesta. That's going to be a good one next Saturday, September 16th, here on The Zone. Now, tonight's action. Our Brandy Flores had a chance to catch up with our next fighter, Grant Flores, earlier today. Let's take a listen. Grant, you've been boxing your whole life, starting at a very young age. We see the type of fighter that you are now, very skilled. But I understand things didn't always come as easy to you, especially when you were younger. <laughs> yeah, they weren't. I was um, I was that chubby kid that walked in the gym, and I just stuck with it, man. Uh, maybe the raw talent wasn't there, but hard work and dedication. Is there. And growing up here in the valley, you worked mainly your whole life or your entire life only with the Diaz brothers here in Coachella, and they train world class fighters. Did you ever get into the ring with them at a young age at all? Um, yes, uh, I believe by the age of 14, um, I told my dad, you know, I want to transition training into the pros, you know, and I started uh, sparring at the age of 14. I sparred with Batir Akmenov, um, Shaq Ram, Jusufov. I was getting there with world-class fighters, and um, that just made me elevate working with them, high-class work. I mean, being 14 years old, that's a pretty tall task. Were you nervous at all? Were you excited? Did you want to get after it? Um, yes, I was very excited. You know, there was some nervous, but, you know, once I got in there with them, I was like, man, this is what it feels like to be in the world class work. Uh, I'm, I'm here for it. And going through that, you know, learning that you have to put in hard work, you can't solely rely on your talent or what you have. How do you think that that's helped you get to this stage at where you're at in your career? Um, with just my coaches also pushing me to, um, to be the best version of myself and working hard always in the gym. Uh, the DS training camp is a very hard gym to, you gotta be in. You gotta be all in or all out. And you know, also my strength and conditioning coach, ben, Benjamin Hernandez, he also transformed me into a boy to a man. Awesome, thank you, Grant, good luck. Thank you. Good job, Brandy. Grant Flores, all Spanish Springs really well, the tail of the tape. He's 18 years old, taller, and has that longer reach. It should be a good scrap coming up between the young man, Grant Flores, and Jalik Bogle. Joe Martinez is our ring announcer. And now, fine fans, we're set to go six rounds of super welterweight action. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside, Ray Arbendanis, Robert Hoyle, and Gerard White. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Raul Caiz Jr. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trimmed in white. He weighed in officially 151 pounds. As a professional, his record stands at four victories, one defeat, two draws with two wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of and representing Tampa, Florida, and St. Pete. Here is Jalik the Freak Boga! And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with multicolor trimmed in the flag of Mexico and the USA. He weighed it officially 151 pounds, and in two fights, stands perfect with two victories, both wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the undefeated super welterweight from Coachella, California, Greg Chief second only, please. Fighter Chief second. Mouthpiece. Mouthpiece. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room, know what I expect. Good, clean fight. Legal punches here for you. Legal punches here for you. Touch gloves, got to both of you. Raul Caiz Jr., the third man in the ring. 
18-year-old Grant Flores. You see Joel Diaz training camp. That's been his home his entire life. He's 2-0, 2-KOs in his backyard. Jalik the Freak Bogle, St. Petersburg, Florida. Came to boxing. And he's got a new side on his Ready. team. Ready. Keith Stewart, former trainer for Winky Wright, is training with him. Watch the head. Southpaw. Yeah, he turns it immediately southpaw. Yep. He goes from orthodox to southpaw right away. So we thought we didn't expect that right away. No, we didn't. Flores, the taller fighter, 151 pounds, immediately looking for the big shot. That's what I've heard about Flores. He does not mess around. Oh. Overhand right from Flores. And big shot from Flores again. Yes. The freak took that shot as these buckled. The, the right Shane, hand I don't know how much longer this is going to go. The way Flores is vicious in that ring. Yeah, the right hand made him go uh, back orthodox. And it wasn't working for him, so he, he went back. Immediately coming strong is the 18-year-old Grant Flores stalking his prey. Vogel is going to be wise to hold like that. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But he's trying to mix it up, continuously switching stances like he just did right there, give him a different look, give it different angles, grab him when he has to. Especially with a guy with that much power, you got to, you know, make him question himself, especially he's young too. Training with Joel Diaz. So this kid did not have the amateur style. Now we can see it. No, he definitely has a professional style. Flores. Yes. Body work. That frame, only 18 years old. Golden Boy signed him his last fight. Stop! And immediately, immediately grabs his head. This is what I told you. I, I worked Bogle's last fight on a Thompson boxing show in a... He fought a man named Lou Lopez and he immediately would get hit and hold and grab. He's like, oh, are you still going to do that? He's like, ah, maybe not as much. Let him go, Jaleek. Let him go, Jaleek. I think you realize I need to. We are yeah, Absolutely. Go, absolutely. Stop. You got to break that up. You know, if, if you're a guy like Bogle, you know what you're here for. You got to, you know, give him some different wrinkles, different different looks. But you can't try to trade with him, right? Uh, I mean, at least not at first. Especially, you know, a guy like Flores is here in his hometown. He's, he's excited. Stop. He wants to, to get out there and look great and get a knockout. So you got to you gotta break it up. Jalik Jr. is who he fights for. He's back home in St. Petersburg. 4 1 and 2 is the record of Bogle. Beautiful grab by Flores. Beautiful uppercut by Flores. Oh, I think Flores hurt him with that right hand. Bogle against the ropes. Final seconds of the opening round. A solid round for the 18-year-old Grant Flores. And keep it. Joel Diaz giving the instructions for 18-year-old Grant Flores doing it right in front of Oscar De La Hoya. You see Oscar sitting ringside and just looking at Flores. 6'1", 151. The hook from Bogle to come start the second round. And again, he has to mix it up and change it up, especially after the end of that round with Flores. Definitely uh, ended well with body shots, sharp shots, sharp counters. He, had to, he has to mix it up, and that's uh, Bogle. Yeah, because if he keeps on taking shots like that, it's not going to be, it's going to be short night for him. 
for more on Flores, go to Brandy Flores, no relation. No punch, no punch. Diaz in the corner of Grant Flores telling him to stay focused, to stay calm, and to pick his shots carefully. And once he finds out he hurts his opponent, to pick his shots even slower and to move his feet a little bit more. He's leaning back a bit too much. Yeah, I, w I went to Joel's gym today, the Joel Diaz training camp he has here in India, uh, to see Bekmir Melikuziev and some of the other guys. And a lot of Uzbek fighters are there. One of the sparring partners for Flores is Israel Madrimov. And I was like, Israel, how's the kid do? Like, he is tough. He hits hard. He's, he's just so young that the sky is the future for this young man. I'll let, you like him that much? He said, oh, yes. Yeah, you can definitely see his power. You can definitely see that he uh, mix up his shots and uh, gives you different looks. And uh, he knows how to set up that power for sure. Yeah, Flores with a big different disparity in the copy box. Yeah, but when you, you know the shame, when you're coming up, you fight those veterans, or you spar those veterans, and they, they don't really give you credit. Majumov is praising him wow. over and over. Wow. The Uzbeks come in, right? I like working with him. Well, that's good. You can see his work ethic. You yep. see, like, he loves to fight, mix it up. And uh, that's why a guy like Bogle has to, you know, grab, punch, make a different, give him different looks. And uh, like he's doing, like he's doing now. You see that voice of Joel. Beautiful body shots by, by Flores. Keep touching to the body, Grant. Stop. Here we go. Box. Uh, microphone's in the corner of Joe Diaz. There you go. Don't let him get, don't let him get close. Keep him outside with his jack. And look at Bogle fighting them off. Beautiful counter by, by Bogle. He's definitely giving him different, different looks this one. This round right here. Minimal instructions from Joel with 30 seconds to go in the second round. Good work. Bogle's tough. Uppercut from Flores. Another uppercut. Bring it up just a hair. Bring it up a hair. Right hand from Bogle's nice. Hook from Flores. Ten seconds. The first time that Flores really been hit in his career. He's only got two fights. It's been easy work. And he answers back. Good scrap here. Going the boy fight night. As Flores stares down at the man Bogle. 18 year old not intimidated at all. Brandy Flores has more on the fight. Yeah, Graham Flores wants to live up to Oscar De La Hoya's um, expectations. And something that Graham foresaw since he was a kid, back when he was nine years old, Oscar De La Hoya visited the Diaz Brothers Boxing Gym in Indio. Grant was there, and he took a picture with Oscar along with his older cousins, uh, Manny. And then just a couple weeks ago, they retook that same picture ahead of this media workout where he signed to Golden Boy. And I asked Grant about if this was a full circle moment for him. He said absolutely yes. He just wants to be able to succeed and really live up to Oscar De Loya's expectations. Oscar telling Grant at the time that he, to just stay focused and expect big things from him. Go. Headed to the third round, so Oscar visited that gym years ago. They recreated the, at the media workout the other day. As our microphones are still hot with Joel Diaz, we hear everything in that corner right now. I definitely feel like Joel gave him good instructions, though. You know, double up on those uh, left hooks and shoot to the, the chest because... Yeah, Joel's microphone's still hot, so we can listen in on him. Get back in your rhythm, Grant. Come on, 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 So, third round of action, Grant Flores. Looking good, he's getting good work here against uh, Bogle. It's ugly, but for Bogle, that's what we expect, and that's what a young fighter needs to go through, Shane. Absolutely, this is exactly what he needs to, to mature and uh, get better.
body work from Flores. Ball goes to the southpaw. Body work from Flores. Ball will give him that resistance. Ball was tough, man. He's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, but when a guy shakes his head at you, usually he's hurt. Controlling the fight is the 18-year-old Grant Flores. Coming up high as Bogle. Punches the flick off the gloves. Bogle on the, the, the body shot. The body shot right in front of us. We yeah. hear that. We got the sweat. <laughs> we came off. Trying to break him down is Flores. This was scheduled for six rounds. Final seconds of the third round. Take a deep breath and fucking restart yourself. Okay, let's go. Step back. Hey. Stay focused and come back in with the right hand. Oh, he's doing it like this. He's one, two. He's doing it like this. All you got to do is step in on that right hand. Don't bring it. Make sure they ain't down no one. Yeah, one, two, bang. One, two, bang. The replays right here, Shane. Looking good. Yeah, he's looking good. He's throwing that right hand over the top. Uh, setting up that, that next shot. Fourth round of action. Grant Flores. He's been training with Joel Diaz and Antonio Diaz since he was eight years old. His cousin, Manny, is coming up next in the co-feature. This is the first time that Flores is taking on somebody with a winning record. His most recent opponent was three and three. It's two and zero. Oh. You got the development of a young fighter, but this is a good a free, no, opponent go, for Flores, especially the training that he gets, the sparring that he gets. Yeah. Let's see what you do in the ring now. Yeah, he's doing good with, with this type of opponent. Um, he's setting up good shots. He's uh, working, working the body, and uh, trying to get this guy out. Now, how does he break him down? Continue to go back to the body. Uh, continue to set up that big shot up, up top and uh, keep on working like he's working. Oh. Well, Shane, you are trained MMA. We don't need that here. <laughs> no, we don't need that here. Push down. Bogle goes back orthodox. He hasn't fought in 15 months. Mentioned his last loss to Luis Lopez 15 months in June of last year. That was his first loss. The, uh, the two draws, you know, let me know that he's, he's definitely a, a very scrappy guy. Very. And, and uh, knows how to, to make it ugly, make it rough in their form. Started taking boxing serious when he was 18 years old. So you see the difference in the amateur background, the experience. No talking, guys. Come on. Good uppercut by Flores. Now, this is where Flores needs to realize, okay, the power shots are not going to work every single time because grown men can take these shots. Absolutely. But that right hand was nice over the top. Right in front of us, Bethany Duran and Shane Mosley Jr. Looking right at you. Bogle wants to snot out. Be careful here, Shane. Yeah, I know. I got to watch out. So you don't wear light colors on the ringside. <laughs> That's right. Flores starting to look like he's going for the home run every time. That's not good. Yeah. But this is the this is the development. He only has two fights. Yeah, he's sparred a lot, but you know you need these types of experiences. The guys that you know won't go out easy. You got to set those shots up. 
How difficult is it when a guy switching stances like Bogo is doing from orthodox to southpaw? Uh, it can be, um, you know, hard for you, but that's why, you know, Joel Diaz told him, look at the chest and uh, focus on that because if you focus there, you know, you're, you don't have to worry about the hand or the, the, the stances. Bogo's making a scrappy in there for him. He, he's he's uh, still in shots, making it ugly. A professional resistance, as some will say, and they're talking at the end of the round. There you go, Bogo ain't intimidated. Now the cousin is coming up next. That's Manny Flores, Gucci Manny Flores, they call him. Working with Donio Diaz in the back. That's our co-feature coming up next. That'll be the Super Phantom Weight Division. Golden Boy Fight Night is in Indio, but on October 7th, Golden Boy's going to Vegas. That's right, Surdo Joe Smith in a new division as former world champion Surdo Ramirez takes on former light heavyweight world champion Joe Smith Jr. live on the zone Saturday, October 7th. So at the end of the round, the tray, okay, Caiz Jr. gets in there and Grant looking at him, Bogle's like, hey, all right. Yeah, but that's part of Bogle's <laughs> game, man. He wants to, like, that's why when he gets hit with a shot, he's shaking his head. He wants to get into his head because he's, he's young. Yeah, he's 18 years old. You got to get in that guy's head. Flores starts that round with a hard right hand. Puts him, puts Bogle right back into orthodox stance. No, 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 no. Fifth here. round elbow, for Grant Grant Flores. Here we go. Box. Two fights have lasted two rounds. So this is good. This is really good for him. Getting hit. Yeah. I'm going to deal with uh, the guy talking. Deal with the guy no talking, Grant. not just standing there. Yeah, have to deal with the antics. That that that's uh, can be intimidating sometimes. Some guys, you know, when they smile at you, shaking their heads, you know, they could be, uh, you know, they could do, um, you know, make you not want to punch. Maybe make you not want to do your thing. Yeah, it, it was two and zero, and both of them were first round KOs. So they're going to the fifth. Oh, I should box. tell you something that they're scheduled for six rounds, and you see the punches landed. He's dominating on the copy box, Shane. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, like you said. 43%. Uh, usually, you get knockouts by that. The, the, you know, last fight we got knockout with 41%. So usually, you, you get knockouts with that percentage. But you know, Bow was tough, and it shows. Tough as the guy from Pomona, huh? Yes, yes. You're not yes. a cul-de-sac Pomona. You're a real Pomona. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. And yeah, guys from Pomona are tough, man. Yeah. Like Stucco, get him yeah. out there, right? Yeah, yeah, man. We <laughs> then gotta... you move up to the marble. <laughs> <laughs> But you still got that attitude, Shea Mosley Jr. He'll be yeah, in the ring yeah. soon. Did a good job on the broadcast tonight. I go to the more fight now. Now it's up to Grant Flores. See if he closes the show. Body shot Ooh. right above us. That was hard. Hook up the top. Oh, oh he dropped him. Overhand yeah. right from Flores. Dropped Bogle. It was a matter of time. Bogle gets up, the legs are wobbling. Less than a minute to go in the fifth round. The crowd at Fantasy Springs on their feet. Hometown kid, 18-year-old Grant Flores. Body work, upstairs. Bogle trying to get away. Flores not letting him. Bogle, mouth wide open. Uppercut oh, from Flores. Beautiful body shots from Flores. Man, Bogle is tough as nails. Yes, he is. But he's continuously breaking Bogle down with uh, those body shots. Final seconds of the fifth round. Strong round for 18-year-old Grant Flores. Here we go, here we go. Five seconds down and box. Done. As Grant winks at Bogle. Last round he was talking to him. This one like Mr. Winkle. Right, right. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. That was a get back <laughs> in the last round. Yeah, you want to get in my face? Here. You got it. You're way too much. Get into your rhythm. Let your hands go. It's a knockdown, Shane. Yeah, and, and it all started from that body shot. 
It all started from that body shot. When you said he had a great body shot, then he came over the top with that right hand. And he must have good power because you can see he hit the glove, kind of, Man. and, and it, he went down. It was not flush. If that was flush, we might not be going to the sixth right. round. Right. Last round, touch glove. Tight defense. Back. This corner tight. Right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The yeah. six and final round. Joe Martinez lets them know it's the six and final round. The pride of Barstow, California, our ring announcer tonight. And hey, we're in Coachella. This is a venue where they do the Desert Showdown, a big amateur showcase where there's normally a bunch of rings. Yeah. Grant won it, but tonight he's the main show right this is what everybody's looking for right now if he ends this this building's gonna explode oh absolutely as it should so how does he end it going back to the body he goes back to the body and then set up that head shot that's how he gets that he gets that knockout and be patient as well you know obviously you got to knock down the last round you got to be patient just like that overhand right then a hook to the body from flores he does not look or fight like an 18-year-old champ. No, he does not. Fights like a grown man. But that's what happens when you get in there with a lot of grown men. <laughs> well, at the age of 14, he was sparring Bataya. Beautiful oh. right hand. Man, that shot was hard right Ooh. above us. Man, Bobo is tough. A tough guy, man. A lot of guys would be knocked out by less. And he's still trying. Bo is still trying to set up stuff. Still trying to break his body down. It's uh, you know, good effort from him. From him. Right hand Ooh. from Bogo. Landlands flush. Halfway through the sixth and final round. That's another good sign. It's his third pro fight, and they have him at six rounds already. Yeah. But they know he can he can get it based on all the guys that he's been in the ring with. He knows he, he can get that done. And obviously his team believes in him. Bogle's still fighting back. Of course. But like I said, that's that's what the, the two draws are for, right? You know that guy's rough and rugged. Look at him. He's got him in a headlock right now, Bogle does. You know, making it ugly. But he's also giving Flores something to go back and look at some film and realizing not everybody's going to fall from a shot. This is Beautiful man. uppercuts from Flores. Bogle could take some shot. Yes, he can. But he's trying to open that left hook to the body again. That's why we're going up the middle. So we can make him forget about that the, uh, the sides and get that body shot. Oh, left, good left, left hook. hook. Body shot from Flores. 30 seconds to go in the fight. Let him go. Okay, he's junior. Been busy tonight. Oh, comes right hand from Bogle, man. Oh, See, he's, no, no, no. he's tough. Making it in the holding. Making the young fellas yeah, get frustrated. No frustration, yeah. This is a good experience. No matter if he gets, he doesn't get the knockout, it's a great experience yeah. for him. He can, he can learn from this. This is great. No, no, no. Let him go. Let him go. Listen for that bell. Box. Final seconds of the fight. And that'll do it. Flores does not get the KO, but he gets six good rounds. For the 18-year-old, real good development, Shea Mosley. Oh, this is this is great development. I think it's probably better that he didn't get the knockout because he can go back and make changes and, and make himself better for it. Yeah. Sometimes when you get the knockout, it doesn't always mean like that you grew, that you develop. Uh, sometimes when you you know get those uh, hard wait fights, wait up, wait up. it makes you better. Richardson Hitchens looks to establish himself amongst the super lightweight elite. He takes on Chong Cepeda, part of another stack card, live on the zone Saturday, September 23rd. That should be a real good scrap right there. Oh, that should be a really good fight. I'm excited for that one. The Tejana back on Grant's head. And you know he'll be in the gym Monday. Oh, of course. Absolutely. But you got, when you're a young fighter, you know, you got three fights now, you got to be back in the gym. You know what I mean? You got to make it a lifestyle. That's uh, And congratulations to his younger brother, Gavin, who just won a big tournament. And you see the right highlights. From Flores. Yeah, he, yeah, he's doing great, setting up that knockdown. Knock um, he got him with the, I think this is in the sixth round. 
he, he trying to make it, uh, trying to get him out of there after the knockdown. And uh, he did a good job, but he, he was unsuccessful because Vogel was so good at, um, you know, making it ugly. He did knock him down in the fifth. 18 years old, weighed 151 pounds. Eventually, he'll go down to 47. It's just the development of the young fighter. Now I see why Golden Boy signed him. Because the first couple fights, I did, I did him with a quick knockout. I was like, what are you going to get out of it? You don't know. Right. Today, professional resistance. Got hit a couple of times. Different styles. Now you see where Eric Gomez and you know, Oscar DeLoya see in this young man. And you can bring him along. Develop him. And that frame right there, he's 6'1", Shane. Man, he's going to be a huge welterweight. And you know how what it is when you're tall and yeah. in vision, you be one of them. It helps yep. you. It definitely does. Definitely All does. right, let's hear the decision. Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three see it. 60-53 for your winner by unanimous decision. He is still undefeated. Coachella Zone. Great. No smile. <laughs> no smile at all. He wasn't. He wanted to get the knockout. You know what I mean? I understand yeah. you're in your hometown, but it doesn't always happen that way, and hopefully he uh, learns from this a lot. Yeah. Enjoy it tomorrow, right? Oh, he will. 100%. <laughs> hey. Echo and Coachella. Grant Flores, his cousin Manny Flores, coming up next. And uh, look at the final compu box stats. 42 to 22% landed. The effectiveness of Grand Flores, you like that. Oh, I love the effectiveness. Usually when you get numbers like that, especially with a guy who is as powerful as Flores, you get knockouts. But, you know, Bogle is just a tough, tough veteran. He would probably be a, a test for a lot of young, uh, you know, fighters coming up. And, uh, you know, good, good on him. Yep. The punch, the power punches. Now, that's a stat I like. Over 50% landed by Flores. Yeah, and he was landing a lot of good body shots, which was great. You know, especially what you want to see in a young fighter. Head shots to set up those body shots. So we had two knockouts, and then we had a decision. What will happen in our next two fights? Manny Flores, your CNLT, then Curiel Pennington still to come. memories we can create now. That's what we were dreaming about when we were kids. I'm very aware of how lucky I am. For the majority of my career, I've been playing and no one's even watched. If you give girls the opportunity to play, they will show up. All I wanted to do was play football. This season and this time kind of became that six-year-old that enjoyed playing football again. When they used to out and be playing in front of 70,000 people. I'm a 100% winner. I hate losing. I got so hard. I finally got here. We are now role models for a lot of young girls. You're going to have struggles. The ACL injury in football is like cancer. There's going to be obstacles. Why has this had to happen to me? But when I do get there, it's gonna be worth it. It's growing, growing, growing. If that doesn't turn into more girls playing, then what are we doing here? We'll have a responsibility to grow the game. We have to pass away for the next generation to show them that it's possible to play in big stadiums. There's something happening here and I need to get involved.
Leaving home doesn't mean you're leaving alone. Leaving home doesn't mean you become a stranger. In fact, wherever you go, they will follow. Follow through the mist that rolls in from the treads. They will march, march on together. Until they meet. Nottingham. Leeds. Wood. It's over! It's all over! Warrington. Face to face, in the battleground, in the middle ground, there's no turning back. October 21st, here on the zone. A welterweight clash featuring Alexis Rocha taking on the undefeated Giovanni Santillan. Let's take a look. Rocha, a six time national amateur champion. Big right, then a straight left from Rocha. That's October 21st from the Forum in LA. Now let's head over to Brandy Flores, who's standing by with the main event fighter, Alexis Rocha. Alexis, October 21st, you got a big fight up against Santiani. He is an undefeated fighter, but, so how are you feeling right now? How's your camping going? Camp's been going great, what could I say? I got a great team around me. First off, I want to thank God. Without him, without him, none of this would be possible. I got to thank all the more promotions. They, they set me up and now I'm going to be main event live at the forum. It doesn't get any better than that, but camp's been going great. It's been a great positive camp and I'm, I'm looking forward for the rest. You're coming off a really great win over Anthony Young. What do you take from that fight as you prepare for this upcoming one? I just, I think it's more of the relaxation. Relaxation of me just being a complete fighter. You know, I know I could bang, I know I could do so much more and I haven't shown it in the ring, but I think for this next fight, I'm going to show a lot more than what I could do. And Santian is undefeated. Yeah. This, he's, um, he poses a lot of danger. Do you see him as that, as kind of a dangerous fighter? Definitely. He's going to be a hungry, motivated fighter to go out there. He's undefeated for a reason. So it's going to be my best against his best. Lex, you're on the verge of big things. You want that shot at a world title, but this isn't just a stay busy fight for you. As you just mentioned, he's going to be a tough opponent. Do you feel like you're taking a big risk going up against Santian? Definitely. I'm taking a big risk with uh, Giovanni Santian, who's an undefeated opponent. And that's what you got to do this in this in this type of level. You got to take those risks, and with the big risk comes a big reward. But I'm not looking forward. I'm not overlooking him. I'm looking straight to Giovanni Santillan. Like I said, I know he's going to be a game and tough opponent, and I'm more than ready for it. It's going to be a big show. You smiled a little bit when you said it's going to be at the Kia Forum. What part of that excites you? And what can fans expect from you? Now you can expect a great show. I'm training for a hell of a fight. I'm training for a victory. I'm just I'm just excited to go out there and put on a good show. Like I said. And to be headlining at the Kia Forum is just, it's a dream come true. Uh, Oscar Deloya made his professional debut there, and he headlined a couple times. There's been a lot of historic fights there, and I'm willing to go out there and put another historic fight on the line too. All right, Alexis, uh, good luck. Back to you guys ringside. Yeah, the Forum in Inglewood. Historic, of course, with boxing. Also, Showtime Lakers. So many cool events have happened there for Alexis Rocha, a young man from Orange County, to be the main event. Really cool fight for him, and it takes on undefeated Giovanni Santiago. Back here at ringside, Petro Duran alongside Shane Mosley Jr. And Shane, let's talk about our co-feature that's coming up. Gucci Manny Flores, the last time he was in this building.
that night when we talked to him yesterday at the fighter meetings, he said, everything was on my side, yet I didn't execute. He wasn't right. And I worked that fight and halfway through it, you're like, this guy wasn't there. Shane, when it's not physically, it's when it's more mentally. And he said he went back and watched it one time, for one time only. You were a little bit surprised by that, weren't I, you? I was very surprised because when I've lost in the past, I'm looking at uh, everything that I do wrong because I want to make changes. And hopefully, you know, that one time was enough for him so he can make those changes and come back and show everybody why he's the man. So Golden Boy said, okay, we understood. You had a bad night. Let's get you back in the ring immediately. So he's the co-feature tonight. There he is working with Antonio Diaz in the back. He's always been disciplined about it, right? He's got the lock in. But Shane, sometimes you can possibly trick yourself into thinking you're okay, but sometimes you gotta talk about what's going on, don't you? No, absolutely. You gotta talk about those things. You gotta make sure everybody's on board with what's going on and uh, make those changes the, the proper way. And uh, I think from what he says that he's he's did the right thing. But also for a young fighter after that first loss, you got to go back and figure out, okay, I'm going to take ownership that, yes, I lost, but the, keep the main thing the main thing. That's hard to do for some fighters. Oh, absolutely, because especially like like he was, he was the hype, he was the main event. You know, everybody's there for him. You know, you get a little arrogant sometimes, and maybe this was the right uh, amount of, um, you know. Yeah, it's never focus. good to lose, right? right? And you don't want to say, oh, it was a good loss, because that just sounds dumb to say. But at the same time, you look at the difference. You know, Manny Flores has the locker room. His opponent, Ortiz, has the tent. He has to share with other people. This is a young man who's a veteran, been around, and he knows nothing's on my side. This can be dangerous, can't it? Oh, it can 100% be dangerous because this guy is motivated. He wants to be in the locker room. He don't want to be in the tent no more. And I, of course, I've been on that side where I was in the tent and I wouldn't be in the locker room. His coach don't even have mid hats. I'm not, not to make light of it, but this is literally the guy who's coming in saying, I'm fighting for my family and a lot on the line. What way will Gucci Manny's career go? Where will Ortiz go? Can he be upset-minded? Mentally, he's thinking that. Can he do it inside the ring? Let's look at the tail of the tape for our co-feature here on Golden Boy Live. The two fighters coming in kind of similar. Ortiz, shorter, but yet he's got the slight reach advantage. Yeah, he's going to use that to his advantage. You know, he's going to want to make uh, and uh, make him remember those mistakes that he did his last fight. So using that range will be important for him. It'll be very interesting. Can Flores get back on the winning side here on Golden Boy Fight Night? Let's go to Joe Martinez to make it official. And now, fine fans, we are set to go our co-main event this evening. Ten rounds in the Super Bantamweight division. And first to make his way to the ring, finding out of the blue corner from Nicaragua, here is Helson Ortiz. Opponent ready to make his ring walk, ladies and gentlemen, from Coachella, California. Here is Manny Flores. I'm 
A very slow rewalk for Manny Flores. One of his buddies rapping, bringing him out. Calm look on his face. Very, very calm look. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little worried about the, the, the ring entrance. You know, he Why? Got all the, because all his boys are out there, you know what I mean? Is it going to be the same walk as before? You know, mm. that, that, that might be... You know, something that distracted him before in the past. And, and you know, he's got his boys there. And now maybe it was just, you know, for, for the, the fans, the local fans. But we'll see. We'll see. You know, that's a good point. Coming off a loss and you, you got the ringing walk, right? Right. And you got another guy who's just walking out by himself, uh, you know, listening to, you know, his uh, country, uh, you know, music. Yep, listen to the anthem. Yeah. So you know, that's Jerson Ortiz. Let's right. see what the difference is. Let's have Joe Martinez make it official. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we are set to go. Our co-main event this evening, six, ten rounds of action scheduled in the Super Bantamweight division. The three judges scoring at ringside are Jerry Cantu, Robert Hoyle, and Fernando Villarreal. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Ray Armendaniz. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white trunks, he weighed it officially 119 and three quarter pounds. In 24 fights, his record stands at 17 victories, seven defeats, eight wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de Managua, Nicaragua, Erson Ortiz. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white, gray, and black. He weighed in 120 pounds even. In 16 fights, his record stands at 15 victories. Just one defeat. 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Presenting the fighting pride of Coachella, California. Here is Gucci Medi. Manny, your line from here on up is good. De aquí para arriba está bien para ti. I gave you instructions in the dressing room. Ya te di instrucciones en el vestidor. I expect a clean fight. Espero una pelea limpia. Obedezcanme. Obey my commands. Y sobre todo, protégete a todo tiempo. Protect yourself at all times. Touch them up. A sus esquinas. Back to your corners. Ray Amendari is the third man in the ring for our co-feature here on Golden Boy Fight Night. Gucci Manny Flores gets a smack from Joel Diaz. Tonya Diaz also in that corner. Coachella on his belt. Everybody on his side. Nobody's on the side of Jerson Ortiz from Managua, Nicaragua. He's got Jorge Leon and Alan Castillo in his corner. How do you respond after losing for the first time? And it's not just that he lost, it's the way he lost where it wasn't really competitive at all, Shane. Yeah, you, you stay composed, uh, you try to take it round at a time and, and break your opponent down, get that knockout, or get an impressive win. That's how, that's how you get it. All right, it's one way to win. There's many ways to win, but it's about how you win that matters. Absolutely. Especially and when you have the boss, Oscar the lawyer, watching ringside. Right, and I think you do that by, by being patient. You know, not trying to get it back right away. You, you get it back in over time. And he has 10 rounds to do it. So, you know, break him down. The rewalk, you're right, though. That's the interesting one. That's the one on social media. You're like, really? You're doing that? Hey, but it, that's the confidence you have in yourself for Manny Flores. Yeah, hopefully it's a confidence thing, and hopefully it's not distraction. Which we were told there were some distractions in the last camp. Yeah, beautiful body shots by, by uh, Flores. It's not that Manny wasn't doing the work in the gym and drops oh, him here beautiful. in the first. Ortiz got caught with an uppercut. He jumps up. He's been down before. He's tough. But in his last fight, he went down three times. Beautiful combinations. Going back to the body and back up to the head. Now, Ortiz, in his last fight, he is a fighter who's normally at a lower division. Most of the time, been light flyweight, minimum weight. Yeah. 
He's fought at this weight before, also fought at 123 when he fought Nathan Rodriguez two fights ago on the Regis Pro Great Chancepeda card on Thanksgiving weekend. That's the one where he went down three times. Well, he's still an active dog. He's still, you know, winging those right hands over the top. So, you know, Manny Flores definitely has to be, be careful and be aware. The last time Ed Ortiz was in the ring oh. and he gets dropped again, he hit the canvas and he's down for the second time in this one. He was knocked out by Nino Sandoval earlier this year in Pomona, and he is looking rough right now, and Manny Flores has knocked him down twice. Can he end it here in the first? That would be a, very, a, a statement to come back and get a first-round knockout. Oh, and he looks like he's on his way. Ortiz just doesn't look right. He's been tagged, and he's been hurt. He's wincing, and body work from Flores. Ortiz trying to survive. Ortiz takes a deep breath. Yeah, Ortiz is not looking good right now. Overhand right from Ortiz, just winging punches. Final seconds of the oh, first. Beautiful, beautiful right hook inside. Got him. I think he held him up. Yeah. All right, so how do you get back in the ring after a loss? By an opponent, you drop off twice. Hey, good work, good work. Watch that overhand right. See, he's ducking down. Every time you're stepping in, he's ducking down to catch with the overhand right. Use your feint. You gotta use more feints. Feint him, feint him. Feint him when he loads. Boom, catch him in between. Huh? And if he fucking goes up on the right, you stay low. And catch him with a fucking body shot. That fucking bully shot to set him with the hands hey. up. Boom. Go jab, jab, and overhand left. You catch him on the wing. It's a fucking clean knockout. Bro. Time up. Go get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. First a knockdown. Yeah, he sets it up with, with a counter right hook over the top after he throws the shot. Here's a second one, Shane. And a quick right hook, yeah. step back right hook. Beautiful, beautifully timed. Manny Flores spars a lot of times with former world champion at 122. MJ, Merjan, who I saw today and told me he just needs to be patient. He comes out too aggressive. He needs to be patient. And he's doing that. Yeah, he's Off definitely hand, upstairs. Ortiz is in trouble. He's wobbling. Flores can end it here. And he's, oh, yeah. He's, he's, but he's looking close. Flores pouncing. Ortiz trying to survive. Body work from Flores. Referee really close. Body shot gets him, Shane. I, I, I think uh, it's going to be here set up the head shot. I think the right hook. And that's it. And it's over. Three knockdowns. Manny Flores gets back on the winning side. Dropping his opponent, Jerson Ortiz, three times. And halfway through the second, it is over. So I guess it was just supreme confidence. He came back and he let everybody know why he's the man again. And he, a beautiful performance. All right, so if you're gonna bring out your dude rapping, you better knock him out early, and he did that. All right, so I, I'll be quiet, Manny. Fifty seconds of the second round, officially. The corner. The team, they knew something wasn't right. They said he better come in and do something tonight. Because you know Joel Antonio, they don't mince words. Of they course. let you hear it. Of course. They must have seen something with the step back right hook. Because uh, maybe he was aggressive or they saw on tape that he was aggressive and would catch the uh, right hook over the top and then left hook to the body shot. I mean left hook to the body. Ortiz is tough. But Manny Flores was rough tonight. And there you see him. We're at Tejana. Jane Murcia, director of PR for Golden Boy, getting the quotes. It'll be sent out. There was three knockdowns, so let's show them to you here on Golden Boy Fight Night. Here you go, Shane. So he sets this up with the right, right hook over the top after uh, Ortiz comes in with a jab. Beautiful setup, setup with the timing. Again, times him beautifully with that step back right hook. They must have been working on this because it was on point tonight. Let's look at the knockdowns. 
So he just comes right back, right after the left left hand, comes back with the right hook. Here it is again. He misses with the left hook, and then comes right back with a chopping right hook down on, on top of the head. So I asked the Uzbek, Merjan Akhmataliev, MJ or Kaka as they call him, earlier today at the gym, like, does this kid have power? He said he does have power, but he doesn't use it wisely at times. Right. Tonight, he used it wisely, Shane. He definitely used it wisely and set up those shots beautifully for a guy that was coming in trying to smother and make it ugly. He uh, cleaned it up with the right hook. So 50 seconds of the second round. Let's go to Joe Martinez. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes the official time. 50 seconds, round number two. We have your winner by way of knockout, Coachella Zone, Gucci Mede Flores. Shane, what's that feeling like after you get your win? After losing for the first time. Oh, there's nothing like that, man. That redemption feeling that like I, I told you guys I was I was who I said I was. Well, you get a lot of people saying, what you say? Like, oh, when are you gonna retire? When are you <laughs> done, right? After you lose. Everybody's there when you're winning. You find out who the real ones are there when you lose. Yes, you and do. let's go to Brandy Flores for the interview with Manny. Manny. You're back on top. You get the first win after uh, coming off the loss here at home. What does this feel like to be back on the winning side here at home? Oh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful feeling. Uh, I showed a lot of doubters today that um, when I when I work hard, I could be I could be whoever. You know, I beat myself my last fight, but this time we work hard. We did put in the work, and look where we're at. You told me before this fight that you felt different walking into the ring the last fight. What felt different tonight as you come out with the victory? Oh, you know, we're confident. We, we put it in the miles. We put it in the work. We didn't cut corners, and we're here, baby. We're here to stay. And to that final knockdown, what did you see there? He was wobbling the whole first round. Yeah, um, we've seen that he was hurt. We got we to gotta be careful because a, a, wounded, a wounded person is worse than a regular fighter. You know what I mean? And in the last fight, you mentioned that you were just looking for that one big shot. This time you saw, you could have had it, you could have tried for it, but you stayed calm and composed. Is that something that you knew you had to be disciplined coming into this fight? Yes, yes. Uh, this, this fight, we, we knew we can't, um, you can't just knock everybody out. You know, you got to set up punches and, and, you know, bring whoever they want back. I mean, I want that rematch again. You said you proved a lot of doubters wrong tonight, but what did you prove to yourself tonight? You know that when I work hard, I could be whoever, whoever they put in front of me. I work hard and I, nobody can beat me. All right, congratulations, Benny. Back to you guys. Good interview from Manny Flores. You know he wanted to call out the people who've been doubting him. A lot of them being his Coachella Valley friends. Of course. There's some of the messages that he got for people like, okay, not many people were asking for tickets for tonight. <laughs> so he's taking notes, but he was very diplomatic about that. Yeah, he was. Well, you see, he's taking the team photo. His cousin Grant. So the Flores family goes 2-0. Back to Mir Israel Madrimov there. The Uzbeks coming in. It's a... Uh, it's an interesting dynamic, that gym right there. Right. All kinds of languages being spoken. Right, right. I don't even think English is one of them, though. But <laughs> Manny Flores and Jerson Ortiz, it was all Manny. The onslaught came in right away. Only six punches landed from Ortiz because he was eating a lot of punches yeah, early. Yeah, he was eating a lot of punches early. He was wobbling very, very early. Uh, you know, that right hook was on point, like I said. I'm not going to lie. I thought this was going to give us seven, eight rounds. I thought Ortiz was going to make some fits for Manny Flores just because the way he looked bad. But, you know, shuts me up, proves me wrong. Yeah. Uh, I thought Manny would win. I didn't think he would win this easy. Yeah, I didn't think he was going to win like that. You know, you, he was definitely expected to win, but not like this, especially with a, a tough and rugged opponent like him. Well, there you go. Gets his hand raised. Oh, walk his sword at the back. Golden Boy Fight Night. Love doing these shows because you see the development of young fighters. An opportunity to get some exposure on a Thursday night. Fights there for the fans. Flores shaking hands, autographing everybody there. So tonight we've seen some young kids put on shows. Let's look at a fight card so far. Jorge Chavez KO, Daniel Luna KO. Decision for Grant Flores, Manny Flores KO. So only one fight has gone the distance. What will happen in our main event still to come? Thank you. 
tough times can even make you or break you. It was tough, but it made me. This was the moment that Anthony Joshua became a major star. I was just shouting at him, like, come on, let's fight, where are you running? Joshua's going for the finish. And this is the, uh, the passion of Dylan White. This is absolute I thought there was going to be riots in the crowd, I really did. In the space of six years, he'd gone from being a raw novice to going in with one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Klitschko down for the second time. One shot away from, from trouble or disaster at any point. You have to dig deep. And they're the type of fights that people remember for many years to come. Busy, busy time on the zone. Golden Boy Fight Night. Love working these shows. You see the development of a young fighter as they try to make their way to a championship fight. It's all about developing fighters. It's all about creating fighters. It's all about putting on shows. It's all about seeing tomorrow's stars today. And for the man who's leading the way for Golden Boy Promotions, the Golden Boy himself, Oscar DeLoya, is standing by with Brandy Flores. Oscar, it is a busy fall time for you guys. I think Fight fans are really excited to see Alexis Rocha get back in the ring on October 21st against Giovanni Santillan. Santillan undefeated, but Rocha looking really good coming out of his last fight with Young. What do you expect to see out of that one? Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a very interesting fight uh, with Rocha live from the uh, the forum where he, in Inglewood. I don't know what they call it now, but it's going to be exciting. It's going to be electrifying. Now the fighter he's fighting is, I was very surprised he took it because it's an undefeated fighter who's uh, uh, in the local scene. It's gonna be a, I, it's gonna be a bloodbath. I, it really is because Rocha, he's, he's come to his senses where he knows he has to fight and be in your face and make a statement. And that's exactly what he's doing. So his opponent is uh, no walk in the park. It's gonna be a great fight. Yes, definitely. And then earlier than that on October 7th, Surto Ramirez back yep. in the ring. A new challenge for him. Sure. He's taking on Joe Smith in the cruiserweight division. Right. 
with that new challenge, what do you expect to see from him, you know, having that minor setback in yeah. his career? Well, it, it wasn't a minor setback. It was a huge setback. Him fighting, uh, him fighting uh, uh, I mean, the, the man in boxing who beat Canelo Alvarez uh, was not an easy task. And uh, taking the year off, not making weight, you know, he had a lot of uh, contemplating to, to, to do and, and think about his career. But I think that now he's back. And Joe Smith is no walk in the park. October 7th will be, uh, I call it a do or die fight. I think that whoever wins obviously moves on and uh, hopefully makes a statement at the new division. But, uh, you know, the loser uh, will have to go back to the drawing board and uh, and really think about his career. So this fight here for Surdo and for Joe Smith is very, very important. And when you're Surdo and you have something like that where something in your career sets you back, as a fighter, how do you get back on track? Shake it off. That's basically it. And you have losses, you have wins, and it doesn't matter how you lose, it doesn't matter how you win just shake it off take a few days off yes but think about what you really want to do do you want to fight do you want to become a world champion do you want to do something in the sport if you don't then walk away it's easy as that it's so simple but if you want to become world champion if you want to become a contender it's tough it's tough as going through hell but if it's in you then you have to work hard you have to stay focused and focus on boxing don't focus on everything else don't focus on everything outside of the sport focus on your craft you are born to do this you are made to do this so think that you are a champion train like a champion and two more guys who want to become champions as well fighting next weekend william zepeda and mercito yeah. hesta that oh. one's i see you smiling I'm that excited. one's gonna be a very exciting it fight is. it is because it not only that it's uh the uh, Mexican independence holiday, uh, the independence of Mexico, but William Cepeda with Hesta. I just saw Hesta train. He is ready. He's coming off a great win with Jojo. I'm super excited for uh, Yokasa to be on the card as well because there's some really good fights brewing for her in the future. And I strongly feel that Yokasa is the top, top female fighter today. She has it all. She has the the, the grit, she has the work ethic, she has the look, she, uh, she wants to become world champion many times over, so this is just the beginning for her. We have great cards coming up. I'm excited to see uh, Sugar Shane Mosley Jr. once again, maybe underneath, uh, uh, underneath uh, Jaime Munguia in November. We have Virgil Ortiz coming back in December. We have big fights coming up, so we're uh, ending off the year with a big bang exciting for fight fans as well and it's funny you mentioned Yocasta Valle because she has graced us with her presence today. Yocasta thank you for coming. Gracias para venir. So you fighting on Mexi Independence weekend in this fight card how exciting is this for you? Bueno estoy super emocionada por volver al ring a defender mis títulos mundiales agradecerle Oscar de la Hoya Golden Boy por esta gran oportunidad ya con mi segunda pelea. She says she's very, very thankful they give her another opportunity to fight, showcase, and defend her title. She's very grateful to Oscar and Golden Boy. And Oscar just mentioned how you want to become a world champion, how you're one of the top female fighters to date, and you deserve a shot at world titles, plural, and you want Senisa Estrada. How, do you, how bad do you want her, and how do you feel yourself going up against her? ¿Qué, ¿Qué tanto quieres de pelear con Ceniza Estrada? ¿Qué quieres ser campeona absoluta? ¿Quieres todos los cinturones? ¿Qué, qué tanto quieres pelear? ¿Ganas tienes pelear con Ceniza? Demasiado. Yo quiero ser la mejor libra por libra, eh, unificar campeona absoluta. Quiero esa pelea. La estoy buscando. Yo sé que se va a dar. Eh, confío 100% en Oscar para que tengamos esa pelea el, lo más seguro el próximo año. She says she's very excited. She wants to be pound for pound, not only the undisputed, she wants to be pound for pound. And she's very excited to represent a Golden Boy. And she wants that fight really bad. Well, good luck. Buena suerte. Thank you so much. Back to you guys, ringside. Uh, a lot to unpack there from Oscar Deloya and Yoka Stavaya. We'll see Yoka next week. Uh, Oscar letting us know that my partner tonight, Shea Mosley Jr., could be back in November. Did you know that? Uh, no, I'm finding out now. I'm finding <laughs> out now, which is a great thing. All right, so we got breaking news for the man who knows, and also Jaime Mugillo. So good stuff from Oscar Deloya. It's main event time here at Fantasy Springs Resort Casino. 
It's time for El Cougar. Raul Curiel taking on Brooklyn's Courtney Pennington. Let's go. Welcome back to Golden Boy Fight Night. Another hot night in the desert. We're at Fantasy Springs Resort Casino getting ready for another main event. Tonight, undefeated Mexican Olympian Raul Cougar. Curiel takes on Brooklyn, New York's Courtney Pennington in a 10 round bout for one of Curiel's regional titles at 147 pounds. Now, both fighters have gotten here very different ways. Curiel, he's training with Freddie Roach, started boxing at an early age, brought up through the Mexican amateur system, winning medals and tournaments, eventually become a 2016 Rio Olympian. Meanwhile, 36-year-old Brooklyn native Courtney Penson started boxing at the age of 23 because his mom said, why don't you go work out? I'm like, all right, I'll do that. Now he's here as a pro. Very few amateur fights, instead turning pro very quickly to make up for lost time was working his way around the club scene. Two very different paths, but we're moments away from seeing them both step into the ring tonight to see who is the better man. Back here at ringside, Bethel Duran alongside Shane Mosley Jr. Shane, you know Curiel very well from your time working at Wildcard. What kind of fighter is he? Uh, he's a hardworking fighter. He has a great game plan, obviously, being in the uh, uh, Olympics. Uh, he knows what he's doing, and uh, he shows that. Now, he's also a fighter where you're thinking, okay, he's got it the pedigree, back and forth. He's only 12-0 and 0 because COVID and also injuries derailed some time. But at 27 years old, he's on the brink of making some noise in the welterweight division. You love his attitude. Why? I love his attitude because he has a lot to fight for. And uh, he's very, very, uh, uh, you know, excited about have, being a father and putting it all together and becoming a champion. And Freddie Roach speaks very highly of him. Freddie always praises his fighter, but yesterday during our fighter meeting, he was talking about Curiel in a different way. Curiel, who lives in Hollywood, goes to the gym and he studies. He goes to the gym and studies. People are asking him, well, what about LA? I don't know LA. His family has come here from Tamaulipas, Mexico. Maybe I'll go visit LA and have them show me what LA is all about. That dedication is what Freddie really loves. Now, Pennington, on the other side, You've also been there as a B-side. Right. You look like a fighter like Pennington who doesn't have the promotion, doesn't have the managers, doesn't have everybody behind him, yet he's got the dog in him. And yes, he, he thinks does. he can win tonight, Shane. Yes, he does. And he has a lot to fight for in this fight. You know, he, he's fighting for his son. And he's fighting for his father. He's fighting for his family, his future. Uh, he, he really has a lot to uh, fight for, and he's motivated. And he, at the age of 36, he said, because I haven't been in so many ring wars i might be 36 but i'm not really because i feel fresh and asked him about curiel the fight tonight. he's like i don't know i took the fight when they called me i said yeah then i went and looked at who curiel is he's that confident in his abilities tonight so that's our main event but pennington has a very interesting story for more on that let's go back to brandy flores there's a gap in Pennington's career, and that's because back in 2021, he gave his father his kidney. Pennington told me that when he walked in and found out that he was the only match for his father, there was not a thought in his mind. He was going to do whatever it took to help his dad. And now he talks about the struggle, not just the physical struggle of the surgery, but the mental struggles he had to go through that he's had to overcome, which he's done. His dad doing great. Pennington ready to go in the ring. And he is just so excited to take on this new chapter of his life, which is making a better life for his one-year-old son. And yesterday we asked him, the, the joke yeah. was, well, how does a kidney shot feel? What did he tell you? I don't have one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good attitude about it. Great job by Brandy Lennon about that report. Now, Raul Curiel, you see him locked in that zone. He's a proud Mexican. 
mentioned he was the Olympian, but at the Olympics, he got food poisoning the night before. Didn't get to fight at the Olympics. He said, that's something that's always going to eat at me. That's why I want to be a world champion. I want to be on the big stage. He's representing Mexico. Curiel feels he's on the right path because he has that right team in Golden Boy and Freddie Roach. He sat down with the Golden Boy cameras to talk about his career. Hi everyone, I'm Raul Curiel, former Mexican Olympian, now professional boxer. This is my second main event, so I'm so excited. Very happy, you know, I do a, a good pedigree as amateur and I do more than 200 fights, so I have experience right now. I'll be fighting around the world, so you know, very happy with what I've done in my career as amateur and very happy right now to be a, a professional, now a NABF champion. I'm going to be defending my title, so I can't wait to, you know, go for the, for the world title too. And I'm not scared by anybody. I never say no to any fight. Every fight that I'm, they offer me, we say yes, let's go. I try to, you know, keep in the gym, like keep always working, keep ready. You know, sometimes it's hard, you know, because first of all, the sacrifice you need to, you need to, you need to take, you know, to do, you know, leave my family, leave my wife. She's pregnant right now and I'm here in LA in camp. So there's a lot of things that boxers you need to come through. So right now, I know I'm, and someday I need to face the, 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 the big dogs in the welterweight, so I don't care. I just try to be ready in the gym, always ready and waiting for the call. And always gonna be the same. I'm, I'm gonna try to win every fight that they, they offer me, my promoters and my manager. And I always try to be like more aggressive than my opponents. I know, I'm, I know my style, I know my power, I'll be confident on myself. So I know I can do a big thing. So I'll be looking forward for the knockout. And if not, I'm ready to fight 10, 12 rounds easy. That's the pool. There are fancy springs. Great spot to be at. Curiel taught himself English by watching TV. He said, I knew I was going to be a main event guy, so I need to do interviews, right? In English? Great job, Curiel. He's learned English in five years. Uh, you see the tail of the tape for this one. A slight height advantage for Curiel, but the reach advantage on the side of Courtney Pennington. Joe Martinez is ready to bring out our main event. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived to our main event this evening. Ten rounds of boxing in the welterweight division. And first to make his way to the ring, finally out of the blue corner, he is from Brooklyn, New York. Here is Courtney Pennington! Ready to make the ring walk. Courtney Kingpin Pennington. Mustafa Marconi in his corner. Just enjoying that walk. You know, nobody's on his side here in California. But very, very confident in him. Started boxing because his mom said, well, you're 23, you just hang around the house. Why don't you go to the gym to work out? That's and that to led to be a pro. <laughs> the Keys to Victory brought to you by The Ring Magazine is jab often and with authority. Stick and move in early rounds. Tie up Curiel on the inside. And the last one, let the right go in late rounds. And ready to make his way to the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Here is the undefeated welterweight from Mexico, Raul Curiel. The undefeated fighter from Tamaulipas, Mexico, Tampico to be exact. Rocking the red. Coming into Vicente Fernandez.
This is a very appropriate song to come out to during this time. Seven fight KO streak for Curiel. But it hasn't been, the one hitter quitters has been him breaking opponents down. Yeah, that's the Mexican style, breaking you down, breaking you down to the body with those left hooks and, uh, you know, chopping that tree down. Chentes Reyes jamming. Let's look at the Ring Magazine's Keys to Victory, brought to you by Editor-in-Chief Doug Fisher. Cut the ring off. That's number one on the list. Back Bennington to the ropes. Attack the body. And then lastly, three and four punch combos win close. That's how he's been knocking people out. Yep. And that's definitely key to victory with a guy that moves and, and stuff like that. You got to put your combination together and mix those up to the body. All right, Joe Martinez. Let's hear it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live around the world on zone from Fantasy Springs Resort Casino here in Indio, California. This is the main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing this scheduled for the NABF Welterweight Championship. It is presented by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and sponsored by Bet Online, your online sports book. All fight odds toward tonight's fights brought to you by Bet Online and Masculine. It's a mentality. Don't be a man, be the man. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, the Executive Officer, Andy Foster with Chairman Peter Villegas. The three judges scoring at ringside, Jerry Cantu, Robert Hoyle, and Fernando Villarreal. And when the action begins inside the ring, your referee in charge, Gerard Y. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, and the fighters are ready. Indio, make some noise if you are ready! Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks trimmed in silver. He weighed in officially 146 pounds even. His professional record stands at 17 victories, six defeats, three draws with seven wins coming by way of knockouts from the Brooklyn, New York Brooks. Here is Courtney King Penn Pennington! And across the ring stands his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing tonight solid red trunks, he weighed in 147 pounds. In 12 professional bouts, he stands perfect with 12 victories. No defeats with 10 wins coming by way of knockout. He is undefeated representing Tampico, Tamaulipas, Mexico. Here is El Cougar, Raul Chief second. One chief second. One, one chief second. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. You know what I expect out of you. A good, strong, tough, clean fight. I'm going to let this guy work in here. I'm going to let him work in here. It's for the NABL Super World to World Championship. Let's go to work, guys. Gerard White, the third man in the ring. He's in the zone, too. Raul Curier knocking on the door of the 147 pound division. Shane, I know we sound like a broken record. It's not if you win, it's how you win. Yes, it is. It's how you win. What do you want to see from him? I definitely want to see him cut off that ring, establish those combinations, and uh, get that knockout. Big thing. You put the best part of last, bro. You want to yeah. see the knockout. Oh, oh, of course. But you got to set up the knockout, right? You don't just get knockout, especially with a style like uh, Curiel. Curiel training with... Freddie Roach. He's been starting slower, but wiser, right? He, he's no longer the kid who's coming in looking for the knockouts. It's, he's been taking his time boxing. Is that something you've noticed? Yes, I have. I've noticed that uh, his past couple fights, he's definitely been slowing down the pace, trying to get, uh, you know, establish his jab and uh, get that knockout. That's something that comes with experience? Yes, it does. And these types of fights is how you get the experience. You know, going against guys that are 17 and 6, three draws. You know, get that experience. And with that type of record that um, Pennington. Pennington has, 
he definitely you know knows how to survive knows how to you know make you work for your money so that's the type of style he has you can see that right now sticking that jab he's uh definitely making him have to think giving him different looks this is a good uh, test for uh, Curiel. Curiel on that seven fight KO streak. He's had some impressive knockdowns, but again, we're, they weren't there. Oh my goodness, the great highlight reel knockout because it's the break guys down. That just comes with some of the sparring he's gotten I mean, over the years. Mean Machine. Right. Stanionis. Stanionis. A lot of a lot of good work that comes through uh, Wild Card Boxing Club. I know. Yeah. So you know, you definitely uh, you get the good work, and you know, it, it shows. Yeah, and he started five years ago at Wild Card. He had to start all over. The left hook to the end. And now it's been working your way up the Wild Card ropes. Oh, nice right hand from Curiel. He's trying to set up that left hook. That's why he threw the right hook first to set up that left hook, making him have to think. Stack that mind. Curiel's last fight was almost a year ago. He knocked out Brad Solomon in the second. I was here. And now is a matchmaker for Golden Boy. I hear Razo and also President Eric Gomes been telling me is we know what we have in him, but it's getting difficult to find somebody to dance with him. Right. You, know, you, you get into that, that tough place where you're like, you can, you know, you have to get competitive work, but still, you know, not at the next level yet. Yep. He feels like he's ready for it. Pennington gets a left hook in there. Work out, there. Work out. Work out. Thank you. Final seconds of the opening round. Our main event, Golden Boy Fight Night in Indio, California. Freddy Roach, cut man, Mike Rodriguez in the corner from Raul Curiel. Watch your feet, guys. So if I'm Curiel, I want to work him back to the ropes, cut off that ring, make, make that ring smaller for him. You know, right now, he's doing it right now, but when they started, he started in the middle of the ring. Now he's making that, that change. Doing the right thing. Look at and that. And he snaps back the head of Pennington, who was trying to get away. And it started with that right hook. He took the jab, right hook, and then it set up that straight left hand. Beautiful setup. Yeah, Pennington's not going to stand there and trade with you. That's not the fight we're going to have. So when you have a fighter like that, Shane, if you're Curiel, what do you do? Continue to do what you're doing. Sit, may, you know, stack his brain. Make him think about all these different things. Uh, the right hook, the left hook. Uh, left to the body, keep on making them, you know, breaking them down. Yeah. Every now and then, Pennington will stay in the middle, but he'll quickly move away, just like that. But he's doing a good job with, with moving, you know, not staying still, not, not getting to the ropes. That's Pennington. Making him have to think. He even switched a little bit, like a, a moment ago. Yeah, you different know, look. Give him different looks, but beautiful body shot from Curiel. Uriel in the red, halfway through the second round. Got the Everlast Mexico gloves on. You got to represent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, tu sabes. Shane was throwing some Espanol at me. <laughs> I was trying to, man. Getting, getting better at it. Oh, we'll get you on the Zone Espanol broadcast soon, bro. Mi amigo. <laughs> es Shane. Right hand from Uriel. You see the back of his trunk saying Garcia. His name is... 
Raul Curiel Garcia. So the nickname Cougar, C-U-G-A-R, is he combined Curiel and Garcia. So it's not the animal. Uh -huh. I was like, well, why would you do that? He said, like, well, I needed a nickname going to the Olympics, but the ones that they were giving me, they were kind of like corny. <laughs> Well, that, that was very creative. Yeah. Oh, nice left hook, right hand for all for Kudiev. Yeah. Well, so that's why it's spelled C U G A R. Creative indeed. He's a smart guy. See, that's what Kudiev wants to be. He wants to push him to those ropes, keep him there, so we can get that, you know, those body shots, yeah. break him down. Oh, Pennington's fighting back. Yeah. But he gets in and gets right out, huh? Yeah. You have to. You can't stay there for him. He felt a couple of solid punches from Curiel. Oh, hook nice from Penny to get in there. That catches the eye of Curiel. <laughs> We're done with two. That was a good so round we've for been Penita. talking about Curiel for more on the story of the 27-year-old. Let's go to Brandy Flores. Raul will finish law school this December, and he said after that he's not done studying. He's going to go back to school and get a degree in psychology because he wants to become a sports psychologist so he can help boxers as they train and go through their career. He said he knows firsthand how beneficial this uh, tool is because when he was on the Mexican Olympic team, they gave him a sports psychologist. He's been seeing one ever since, and he says not enough boxers have it, and it's extremely beneficial, so he hopes to help others in the sport of boxing, guys. He's very open about the mental side of the sport, working with Miguel Angel Fritz, a sports psychologist from the Yucatan. And one thing about that is that you know, he's finishing up law school in Mexico. He does it online, the psychology side. And he brought it up. He's like, you know, a lot of fighters, we need somebody to talk to. One, a psychologist, but a sports psychologist especially. You love that. Oh, I loved it because, uh, you know, people don't put that much value into having a, a sports psychologist, somebody to help you with being competitive and, 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 you know, all the stuff we go through, how to hold all that together, you know. So I'm, you know, proud of it. And he wants to help young fighters on the mental side of it. But, of course, the main goal is try to get to 147-pound peak. An interesting man is Raul Curiel, who made his pro debut on the Canelo Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. undercard back in May of 2017. I was hosting the press conference, and I introduced him, and I started, you know, asking him a question. It's like, oh, Raul, como te sientes? And he answers me in English. Like, I didn't know him. I'm like, yo, for real? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I've been learning English watching TV. Good for you, young man. How'd you learn your Spanish, Shane? Eh? Oh, just growing up in Pomona and uh, being around the boxing gyms. Wait, do you speak Spanish or do you speak boxeo? There's two different words. <laughs> uh, a little bit of both. You know, I've done a lot of traveling in my life, so you're definitely picking up uh, on both sides. All right, well, don't use the, the Spanish you hear in the gyms on a broadcast. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. That's X-rated. <laughs> and then some. You're right. Oh, look at that. Uh, Pennington coming back with that right hand. Yeah. So he's trying to run him into shots. So that's why he's moving away, moving away, trying to you know lower his guard and then come over the top with the right hand. And the last round, he caught him with a left hook. You know, I don't know if it did anything as, as far as, you know, not hurting him, but he's uh, trying to stack up those those uh, little little points there for himself. Yeah, Pennington's not going to engage you and get into that firefight with you, which is a smart game plan by him. Absolutely. Make it ugly. Make it boring in there so that, uh, you know, he... Uh, Loses, loses his focus, and you're able to take advantage of it. Well, that's one of the things you got to do. Let him go. Let him go. Let nice tie-up from Pennington. See, those are some good things. You know, when, when there's a law in the action, tie him up just like he did right there. Make it ugly. Make him forget about his game plan. And then, and then uh, you know, sneak those shots in. Not behind the head. Step back. Step back. On the zone, also on the Golden Boy YouTube page. Make sure you subscribe to the Golden Boy social media accounts for all the behind the scenes and also to see what's going on. Nice. Big weekend for Golden Boy next weekend in Commerce, California. Let him go, Korea. Let him go. And Vegas, October 7th. Alexis Rocha, October 21st. And we just found out that Mungia may be in November and Shane Mosley, Virgil Ortiz eventually.
crab out slowly. All right? Beautiful. That's how you work. You expend your energy? Don't expend so much energy. Take your time. Be relaxed, okay? Be relaxed. Listen to me. Let's talk some burly right now, all right? You can go from burly to Philly, but I need the Philly walking to your right. Burly to Philly. The left hook is there, you see it already. The only thing is when you hit this thing, KSI takes on Tommy Fury. That first conference alone got me fired up. That's October 14th, live on the Zone pay-per-view. But that's not all. Logan will be fighting in the other half of the double main event, taking on Dylan Dennis. Those instructions in the corner, uh, you know, have me curious. He said, go from Burley to, uh, to, Philly. to Philly. You know, so when he said Philly, I know what the Philly shell is. They go in that uh, to the right. Well, let know. me know. Yeah, yeah, okay. So he told them to go to Philly. So what? Is, I, not Philadelphia. No, no, no. He wants the Philly shell. So you know, what's that? Shelling up. You 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 uh, bring that shoulder over over your chin, kind of uh, being yeah high high guard, right? Kind of like Floyd Mayweather esque esque. Yeah, and uh, why do does he want him to do that though? Uh, maybe trying to set up a shot. Maybe trying to set up you know that right uppercut because you know Curiel's coming in there. Uh, and stuff like that, but he told him to do the uh, the Burrell or Bur Burley, Burley, uh, and I'm not really sure what that is. So I got some homework to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we got the Philly shell. That was Mustafa Marconi in the corner of Courtney Pennington with the instructions. Thanks for everybody watching around the world. Those the people watching the Philippines, the people watching in Europe, checking in on Golden Boy Finance Thursday night in Southern California. And that from Brooklyn, New York is Courtney Pennington. Let him go, let him go, let him go. Pennington is doing a good job with breaking up the action. Continuously throwing that jab, trying to mess up, you know, the rhythm of Curiel. And I think he's doing a, a decent job. But when you got shots like that, where you're throwing that jab and that right hook and that jab straight down the middle, you know, uh, you, you catch a guy off guard. Pennington. Last two fights, he's been stopped. Vlad Pannon got him in May of 2022. James Metcalf in December. Also had a scrap with Charles Conwell in 2019. Well, when, he, when we spoke to him, he said that he had taken these at, at, at any weight that he could yeah. get. So, you know, that, I'm sure that weighs on you. You know, you're not fighting in your weight class. They probably call him last minute, you know. So, it's hard for him. Yep, but for this one, he had a camp. Training in Brooklyn. Bennington also runs a logistics company that he owns. And his wife running that business. So, when he had that kidney surgery a couple years ago, he was in bed for three months. There was never a doubt that he was going to get back into the ring. Missed it for a fighter, but just to be sitting there doing nothing, that got to be tough. Oh, yeah, definitely tough. When you're in an active, like this is a way of life, especially for, you know, at the, at the top level. So if you're not in the, going to the gym all the time, it's hard for you to get back. Beautiful you uppercut for Curiel. All right, so Curiel controlling this fight. Go on the boy fight night. Indio, California. That was a push down at the end of the round. And there you see his fiance from Guadalajara, Hinahali, who was a fencer for the Mexican Federation. That's uh, Curiel's mother next to her. She lives in Guadalajara, now lives in Arizona, but they, were, they met at the Olympic Federation facility in Mexico City when Curiel was an amateur. She was a fencer trying to make it to the Olympics so because of her fencing background and knowing the sacrifice an athlete has to make, she's like, she knows, hey, I'm not going to talk to you for a couple days. Don't worry about it. Because she's been there, done that. So it's great to have that kind of support. And there you see the baby who's going to be due in November. Kuriak controlling this fight. Yes. yes, he is. But we have Pennington coming back, trying to be competitive, trying to make him work for it. Fifth round, scheduled for 10. 
This is where you want to start seeing the separation from Curiel, right? Yes, you do. And you want to see him start pushing uh, Pennington back to the ropes and keeping him there. Or making him feel like this ring is super duper small. But Pennington's going to make it hard for him because he knows that that's the way that uh, Curiel has to win. So you keep it in the middle of the ring or you keep it, keep it circling. Curiel came to the sport of boxing in his teenage years. His father took him to the gym. His father is mother here from Tampico. So he's from Tamaulipas, which is, if you're looking at Houston underneath that, uh, on the Gulf of Mexico. And look at the copy box punches through four. It's all Curiel right now. Pennington, only 9%. But from Tampico, where his dad said, son, you can box, but you better go to school. His son's doing that. And saw his father today in the lobby. How are you doing? I've known him since, since he was a pro. But the dad, he's like, you know, I'm nervous. You know, but was out there like a proud dad wearing the Curiel team shirt, walking around. He was like, but I feel good about my son. Of course, that's a, that's a beautiful part about boxing. You never know what can happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, like you can train your, your hardest, but that doesn't mean you're going to win, per se, right? So, yeah, of course, it's nerve-wracking. Yep, and their son hasn't been home since 2016. He trains in Southern California. We'll go home every now and then for maybe a week, but he's back here. Fiance is moving to Southern California. So the sacrifice has been made by himself. But right now is where you want to start seeing what the more fight now is about the action, about the development of the fighter. You're winning the fight, you're controlling it, but it's time to give something. Make Happy. Shane Mosley Jr. say, oh, okay. Absolutely, but but Pennington is making it very difficult. He's 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 making it, uh, you know, being real slippery in there, bending his head, yep. doing the Philly, you know what I mean, feigning a lot. He's he's giving him some good looks. He's not making it easy for him. For no, sure. absolutely. We expected that from Courtney Pennington. Very elusive in there with the head movement and the bending in the waist. And Pennington, a veteran fighter, his last scrap was at the twenty three hundred in Philly. <laughs> Hey, you're in there. You're all right. Maybe that's where he got the Philly from. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, that'll make Bernard Hopkins very happy we mentioned the Philly. I mean, if you're a journeyman, you might as well pick up stuff along the way. Pick up the Philly, right? <laughs> Beautiful. Right here. That's what you want to see. Those that's kind of combinations. That's the combination. From Curiel. Coming up next month, where are we going? <laughs> the Cosmo in Vegas? What? October 7th, former world champion Zurdo Ramirez takes on Joe Smith. They get new divisions. They're going to be cruiserweights. Live on the zone, October 7th. Let's go. It's a good spot for a fight there at the Cosmo. You live in Vegas, right? Yes, I do. I feel you'll be there. Oh, yeah. Highlights of Curiel in that round, Shane. Yeah, yeah. Just to see, there, there he is. There's Pennington making it rough, but, you know, uh, Curiel make, uh, putting those combinations together and getting those shots off. Solidito jamming inside Fancy Springs. Crowd's ready to dance. I know he's trying to move right now. <laughs> I can't help it, man. You got to. It's that Pomona. Shake rounds, get to pretend. Pennington's definitely making Curiel think in there. Those jabs, those different movements, just like that one. You know? Much different fight from his last one where he knocked out Ramdis. I got the one in the second. The more on the fight, let's go to Brandy Flores. Yeah, I was just over, I was just listening to Freddie Roach talking to Curiel during, in the middle of that round, and he was telling him, once he lands that jab, to unleash. So they're unleashing him. They want him to take it to that next level, guys. We've been asking for that, so Freddie hurt us. Yeah, next he, level. He must have hurt us. He must be mic'd up. Now, when you're working a fight like this, and you're in there, Shane, and you know you're controlling, or you know you, you could do more, but the guy's not there, that you get frustrated? 
Of course, but but you got to stay patient, shoot those shots to the chest, and uh, you know help them bring those guards down or manipulate the, the, the guard and get those right hands up the top just like that one. Yeah. His last knockout was a Brad Solomon, but it was in the second round for Curiel. But he did knock out Agathon back in 2021. His knockout started with Jeremy Ramos here in November or October of the 19th, and Agathon got him. And Pennington looks like he slowed down a bit. Yeah, he did. I mean, obviously, getting, getting those, those hard shots like that left hook right there, uh, you know, can slow you down. But he's still game. Last time that Uriel went the distance was in 2018. A decision against Ryan Pino, tough Puerto Rican. Yeah, Uriel isn't going to win you a bodybuilding competition. But you were saying he's really strong. Yeah, he's really strong. And then he showed that in, in his training, sparring, sparring sessions I've seen. Stop. Clash yeah. of heads there. You okay? Yeah, Pennington. You okay? Yeah, yeah. You got an accidental headbutt. Accidental headbutt. Gerard White lets us know. No blood, though. Yeah, it happens when, when you're trying to, you know, stop the action, make those crashes in. You know, it could happen. But it's part of boxing. A hook from Curiel. Pennington backing up. Another hook from Curiel. He's trying to sit down on his punches a bit as the sixth round is coming to a close. Our main event, Golden Boy Fight Night in Indio, California. Yeah, it was a clash of heads, but no cut. Let me ask you something. When you open up, why are you running right back to the down? When you open up, you stay south stay south for Stay south for until you're in the right distance to turn back to the down. Listen, you got skill, but you're not showing them right now. You're going back to the thing where you want to fight. Stop wanting to fight so much. Be a smart fighter. All right? Be a smart fighter. Don't get hit. Hit him. All right, he's right there. That right hand over the top was, was great. Uh, he was trying to get those body shots off, but uh, Pennington being elusive kind of deflected those. The corner, Mustafa Marconi telling Pennington, be a smart fighter. You're getting hit. Yeah. Doesn't sound like they're really uh, enjoying what they're saying in the corner of Pennington. No, maybe maybe they wanted him to set up more shots. Uh, you know, obviously with the movement, you're not just moving, or you shouldn't be but just moving just because you got to move to, to set up the shots. And I don't think he set up enough shots. Wanted to be a smart fighter. They're getting hit too much, but go. he goes there and mixes it up. Let him go. Punch out of that. Punch out of that. Yeah, maybe he thinks that that's the best option for him because he's getting hit going out or pulling out. Uh, so maybe, you know, getting closer might, might fit him. Or maybe he feels that way. That's Pennington. Yeah, Pennington hasn't really landed any power shots. No, but he's, he's landed flicking jabs and things like yeah. that that could potentially mess, you know, mess up your flow. Yeah, but nothing to make Kareel say, okay, this guy can hurt me. You see the power punch is thrown through six rounds. Okay. Yeah. Is cutting off that ring right, right there. They switched southpaw to cut it off. That was a good, good switch for him. I definitely think more feints would, would help him set up uh, more shots. I, I, would, I think more feints would help Curiel set up more shots. More feints will help him out? Yes. Because Pennington sees him coming. Taking his time as Raul Curiel, not acting like he's got a red eye to catch or anything like that. His family's going to stay here in L.A. for the weekend. He's winning the fight, but he's not breaking down Pennington or 
taking away his will because Pennington's still right there. Yeah, I think he's rushing that hook a little bit, Curiel. Um, I think if he, like I said, set up the feint, uh, I think he'd maybe get it because uh, Pennington's trying to break his rhythm. So how do you break a guy's rhythm that's trying to break your rhythm? Feint. See, when Pennington jumps in with a shot like that, he's, he's not trying to, like, hurt him. He's just trying to disrupt him. Hook from Curiel. Haven't really seen the combinations get put together. Well, when we spoke to Pennington, he said that uh, Curiel has very flat feet, and he was going to move and break up his rhythm because he's a rhythm fighter. And he's showing them. September 16th, we're going to see lots of action. Camarón Cepeda, who breaks record for punches thrown in a fight. The Mexican takes on the Filipino Mercito Hesta at the Commerce Casino in L.A. Live on the zone, September 16th. So where's Cepeda in the ring ratings? Number seven in the lightweight division. There you see Devin Haney is the champ undefeated. Ryan Garcia. Pitbull, Gervonta, Davis, Lovachenko at the court of the ring ratings panel for the lightweight division. Coming on, trying to move on up at seven. But the Duran, Shea Mosley, Brandy Flores with you. Golden Boy Fight Night for the eighth round. It's scheduled for 10. Our main event. Tonight's card, only one fight has gone the distance. The other ones were stoppages. I think our, we're going towards the distance in this one. That's what it looks like. We're going towards the distance because Pennington is, is, is switching up his rhythm and uh, making, making it a hard fight. Which is what we expected from Pennington, who's a rugged fighter. I mean, he run, the man runs a logistics company. <laughs> right. He knows how to make things happen. Yes, he does. He may not be able to make this win happen, but he, he uh, can get the, the survive. Yep. Yeah, Pennington's not going to throw anything hard. Not going to sit down and punch it at all. Curiel throws a combination if you've been asking for. It is. And he needs to keep him there. He needs to keep him. Uh, and Curiel. he doesn't. Pennington's slipping away. How does that happen, where he slips away from you? Well, just uh, stepping out off to the side uh, after you miss uh, some punches. Uh, some people use their hands. He's using the Philly, so he, uh, you know he could he could definitely use his elbows. That's Pennington to to maneuver, and uh, that's how he's getting getting it out. Could he have smothered himself a little bit? Um, I think he has him in the corner. At times, he's smothering himself. I think if, if he, you know, stepped over to the left or the right uh, to give himself some space in order to cut that distance down, uh, I think it would help. Yeah, because the work that you get at wild card, it's, I mean, it's not sparring there. It might as well be a fight, main event fight. They're unsanctioned stop, fights. Stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who they are at times. Right. Yeah, that's how it happens in boxing gyms. Yeah, but, when you, but when you're one of Freddie's guys, there's things to work on. Then, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Freddie is a very good coach, and he's going to give you a uh, well, great coach, I should say, and uh, he'll give you a lot of stuff to work on. But now, you see there's wrinkles to Curiel, but it's, all right, where's that dog at you? Where, where's, where's that bite you're going to have where you're not going to let a guy like Pennington get away from you? I mean, obviously, easier said than done on the broadcast. Yeah. I'm being selfish here. I want to knock out. Of course, um, I think I think uh, he could Curiel could get this, the knockout by not falling over when he throws his right hand, right? Not leaning over, and I think that that would help him stay stay balanced so he can get the next shot and throw those combinations, right? But if you fall off balance, you can't get the combination. Good right hand by Just Curiel. Like that. At the end of the round, Curiel stepping on the gas. 
Pennington in the corner, and we're done with eight. And now Curiel has a little spunk in the... Fantasy Springs, the home for Golden Boy Live. We got boxing here, over 100 degrees in the Coachella Valley tonight. I know the announced stage coach. A lot of people want to go see Morgan Wallen. Well, right now tonight is Raul Curiel inside the event center. We're right here. Shay, put your hand up. There you go. Eighth round. We highlight, Shane. That's that right hand you're looking for. Yeah, and he sets it up by not falling off balance, and then he's able to, to get those types of punches and those types of combinations to definitely win the round. And he needs more like that if he wants to get the stoppage. Curiel jumps off to the stool to get the ninth round started. And Courtney Pennington bleeding from the mouth. His corner was working. And you hear the crowd finish it. Come on, everybody's got instructions for Curiel now. <laughs> Do you hear the crowd? Absolutely, I hear them. And uh, obviously they come out here for that. You know, these fight nights are, are, are known for getting those knockouts, having those, that young talent come up and get uh, knockouts and uh, give the fans what they want. That's knockouts. Especially on a Thursday night. Absolutely. Who doesn't love Thursday night fights? Oh, I do. And our staff does. Yeah, me too. I grew up on it. You also grew up on fights every night. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I mean, that's what happens when you have a dad that's a legend. Oh, like, like yesterday with, uh, with the fighter meeters and you had Tonyo Diaz. Like, yeah, I fought in Madison Square Garden against your dad. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You're like, yeah, I was there too. Tonyo, I was nine years old, but I saw it. Thank you. Yep. There you go. There you go, Pedro. Shane Mosley Jr. Making his way in the boxing world. Fighter hand now broadcasting with us tonight. Doing an excellent job in his broadcasting debut. Bring that up, Pedro. Seeing the wrinkles. Telling us why things are going on in the ring. I think uh, uh, Curiel will do his, uh, himself justice if he doesn't smother his work. Stay at that, that long range. Get those shots like that. Um, body shots, putting those punches together. This is how he gets the knockout. Not smother himself. And Pennington escapes from the corner. Briefly. Curiel digging to the body now. Pennington digging a deep breath. That tagged him. Pennington trying to tie up Curiel. To no avail. Cougar. Houndson. Bennett's have really slow down. Yeah, but he's still crafty in there, throwing those little peppering shots. Not hurting, but maybe stopping him. So that's a good on him. It'd be good for Curia to not smother himself. Stay at that range. Keep digging those shots to the body, slowing him down. I think when you can sense a knockout, you, you tend to, the natural reaction to, is to go in there and smother yourself and just go kill. But you gotta keep that, that balance, keep that distance so that you can get the proper shot. Pennington is tough. Yes, he is. He knows how to roll with the punches, not get hit flush. But with a record like his, that, that, that screams to me like he know how to survive. 17, 6, and 3. Club shows, battles. Ninth round winding down. Let's go. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, here we go, the 10th and final round. 10th and final round. Curiel instructions. Pennington, it's just motivation. And Stop. digging down where they're calling Stay out back. how bad you want to do things. Yeah, absolutely. Two Which, different tales in this fight. Yeah, I mean, different paths for, for different guys. Yep. And uh, I think that, you Ready know, obviously that path fits what, what Coach was saying. <laughs> Come on, you want this? And here's Gurriel. Shane, you said it in the beginning of the show. Yeah, it's important to win, but it's how you win. If you want to move up to the upper echelon in the division. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I think that he's, he's putting a, on a good performance for himself, that's Curiel. But he's not getting the knockout. He's not uh, cutting off the ring like we would like and putting those combinations. But he's still doing a great job and, and winning this fight for sure. Beautiful combination from Julio. He needs That's more like that. That's what you that. need to have. More yes, of that. Yes, we need more of that if he wants to get the knockout. Let him go, and then you have Pennington tying up. Pennington's just trying to survive here. Oh, absolutely. And he's doing the right thing to survive. But one of the keys to victory from Doug Fisher was combinations. You need to see that from Julio. The, the talent is there. The ability is there. But you got a dance partner who's not willing to engage with you. That's also one of the things about style of big fights, right? There yeah, you go. And, then, and then you have to figure out if a guy doesn't want to engage with you, how do I break him down and make him engage with me? Yep. And uh, we, you know, he has to do a better job that of that. Hello. 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 Hey, you, okay? you might have hit him in uh, Tamaulipas. <laughs> Bring it back up to Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful right hand over the top. All right, Shane, give me a little Espanol breakdown. Oh. Que te gusta? <laughs> uh, man, you put me on the spot. Nah, don't do it. <laughs> oh, man. Que te gusta de Curiel? What do you like for Curiel? Uh, Let him go. Let him go, Pinto. Cancho del Ligo. Cancho del Ligo, though. There you go. That's what you want to see. Liver shot. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Not the kidney. Because he ain't got one. Yeah, he donated to his father. The Pinto. Oh. Man, he's a tough dude. Yeah, he is. Like, if you're, if you're a prospect and you see Pennington on your side, you're like, man, that's going to be a rough night. And I feel like the knockout is right there. You it's know what I mean? There. It's there, but he's just not letting it go. Yeah. The workman like effort from Pudiel. He's going to get the job done. Oh! What? I'm sorry, bro. Did he stop it? Ooh. Gerard White jumped in and stopped it with 10 seconds to go. I was not expecting that. I was. And the corner for Pennington is lit right now. The commission is holding back the trainer from getting into the ring. 253 of the fight. I. Wow, I'm surprised by that. Yeah, I was not expecting that. And I, I, I think that's a call for, uh, honestly. Um, I'd be highly upset. I mean, obviously we knew that he was gonna, he wasn't going to win, but you know that was that's disappointing. Uh, there you see the corner. Uh, Mustafa Marconi talking with Raul Curiel. Respect between the two. You see Curiel saying thank you. Interesting. All right. Well, next weekend you're gonna see a lot of punches thrown. Camarón Cepeda. Puts his undefeated streak on the line against Marcito Hesta in L.A. Live on the zone at September 16th. So Curiel improves at 12-0 and he gets his 11th. I mean, he improves at 13-0 and he gets his 11th stoppage. I honestly thought that Gerard White thought... So it's going to go down as a KO. We're telling him it's officially a KO. I thought White might have heard the 10th count and stopped it because the bell. Uh, maybe he got yeah. confused. But no, because it, it was right at 10 seconds. Okay, regardless though, it's a KO for Raul Curiel. La Chona's jamming. Curiel, we're looking at the highlights for this fight that went almost 10 rounds, Shane Mosley. 
Yeah, he was doing a great job, especially with that swivel jab, uh, throwing that straight jab, right hook over the top, and then and then the, the straight jab down the middle uh, was working for him. And then those body shots, that right hand right over the top of the jab was working uh, great. Some good stuff from Korea. He has a, a lot to be uh, happy about in this uh, in this fight. Yeah, he's not going to face anybody like Payton again. You see the fiance with the baby girl on the way. I'll celebrate. And then here's the stoppage. You saw Kuriel having flashes up looking like he controlled the entire fight. You see something. There was a, just kind of stepped over his foot. Yeah, he's throwing the combinations. Maybe the combinations is what, you know, made uh, the referee come in and stop it. I thought it was uncalled for. And but like, what are you doing? Especially with 10 seconds to go, you know, it's like, you know, the guy was fine. Yeah. But, uh, regardless, though, Curiel gets the victory on Golden Boy Fight Night. Joe Martinez, let's make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 53 seconds, round number 10. Referee Gerard White puts a halt to the bout for your winner. By way of knockout, he is still the undefeated NABF welterweight champion, El Cougar, Raul Cougar. So Curiel, one of the regional belts that he has, hoping to get into uh, the rankings. Great job by Joe Martinez tonight, our ring announcer. He always does a fantastic service here on Golden Boy Fight Night. There you see Curiel with his team, ready to take the picture. All right, so let's look at the final numbers for Curiel tonight against Pennington, the final punch stats. 30% on the side of Kudia, of course. No surprise, Shane Mosley. Yeah, no surprise. He was landing great shots up top with the right hand uh, and landed some good body shots. When he put his punches together and put up those combinations, he was looking great. Both of them throwing over 500 punches, but it was Curiel landing at a 30% clip. All right, let's recap what we saw tonight. Golden Boy Fight Night in Indio, the card. Chavez KO, Luna KO, Grant Flores decision. Gucci Manny KO and Curiel gets a late stoppage. Sixteenth of December, Arizona. We go to work. Arizona. Jesse Rodriguez against Sonny Edwards is just a fantastic fight. You now have one piece of the 112 pound crown. What do you want to do next? Sonny Edwards, that's the only option. I want to see an undisputed champion in the flyweight division. Sign the contract. Bam <laughs> Rodriguez is probably the biggest puncher in the division. That's the reason he signed with Matchroom and with the zone. I think this is genuinely the elite as elite can get. The big unification to come against Jesse Rodriguez. He's going to have to be switched under every single second of every single round. Bam Rodriguez, where are you? Bam Rodriguez, coming on the performance of a lifetime! Oh, lovely long left to all in. Sink or swim. This one of the, the best fights of the year, pound for pound. Joshua! Certain fighters, they wait for the belt. That's not a true warrior. True warrior will wait until the referee rips you apart. I've been in many of the final moments in my career. Dylan White fight, which was a straight out war. These are all times that will add to the legacy. Oh, I'm sure he's getting up from that. It was tough, but it made me.
smelliest player at Arsenal. The smelliest. I push you. That's a good ball and it's in! Congratulations for Raul Curiel. That's what the crowd is telling him, representing wildcard boxing. And Curiel now 13 and 0. He gets the stoppage late at the end of the fight, technically, Shane Mosley Jr. But tonight he goes hard rounds against Courtney Pennington, who was a tough opponent for him. Learned a lot tonight. We didn't get the big spectacular knockout, but you liked what you saw. Oh, absolutely. I love what I saw. I think it was a learning lesson for him. And he'll go back and watch this and believe that uh, he'll learn and uh, he'll cut off the ring and set up those shots and to get the knockout. All right, so eight fights in a row where he stopped his opponent. But Curiel, who's signing autographs for that young man, is a fighter who said he wants to be at the 147 pound spot he wants to be in the top 10 you see something from him but if he gets the right dance partner you know there's something with this young man that he can do especially with Freddie Roach on his side and, you know for Raul Curiel is now 13 and 0 he uh, will become a father in November a baby girl so congratulations to him uh, this is a young man who the development is there continues to add wrinkles to it Did you have some fun tonight oh I had a whole lot of fun yeah, you had a lot of fun tonight. We saw some stoppages. Uh, we saw some good knockouts. And Golden Boy Fight Night is all about the development of fighters, giving him an opportunity to showcase. And one of the fighters that we like, he went the distance, but it was good for him. 18-year-old Grant Flores. Tough fight, but the kid has some goods, doesn't he? Oh, he definitely has the goods. Uh, you can see he has a lot of power. You can see he sets up his shots. Yeah. He was just in there with a tough guy. And sometimes you need that so he can work on his game and work on to get those knockouts. And then his cousin, Gucci Manny Flores in the co-main, ended up stopping his opponent in the second round after previously losing as the main event. So he said, I know I got to put on a show. He did that. So a lot of good fights here for Golden Boy on Golden Boy Fight Night in Indio, California. So make sure you follow the Golden Boy social media accounts for all the behind the scenes pictures and interviews. And also keep up to date with what's going on. It's going to be a busy September, October. Shane's supposed to fight in November. There's a December. There's all kinds of stuff going on with Golden Boy. Right now, I want to say thank to everybody in the production truck. Great job tonight leading us through here. For everybody involved, Brandy Flores and Shane Mosley Jr., I'm Bethel Duran saying good night. Thanks for watching Golden Boy Fight Night. Coming out attacking right away is Rosito Hesta.